All right, pilgrims. <laughs> All right. A very good morning to you, Grenada, and the rest of the world. If you're wondering why I'm smiling this morning, it's because, you know, I know that uh, in North America, the clocks were supposedly moved forward at 2 o'clock this morning. All right, so uh, those of you on the eastern seaboard, the eastern uh, part of the United States, are on the same time as I am right now, one minute after 9 o'clock. Well, usually at this point in time, there are a lot of people of you, uh, a lot of you already on, on the Internet, especially on Rumble Chat, but this morning I'm only seeing one ha-ha-ha-ha-ha as I speak. Here comes the second one, but this one's right here in Grenada. Ah, yeah, you guys got things totally mixed up, eh? But it's nice to have you back on the same time as we are. And let me tell you, folks, you couldn't have picked a better morning to join us because we got all kinds of stuff going on here this morning, particularly as it deals with the uh, revolution. Yeah. You know, we have a big uh, anniversary coming up, 40th anniversary, and you're going to be hearing a lot about that throughout the course of the morning, all right? Right now, let's get to the rundown. Don't have much time to waste. Our editorials, we do have uh, two editorials for you this morning. One from the Grenada Advocate, which is captioned, looking towards more sustainable food systems. What's that all about? Won't be long before you find out. The new today is captioned, A Proud Moment. Yaman, yeah, big celebration here in the spice yesterday. Big, big, big. As far as interviews are concerned, or I should say one interview is concerned, this morning we do have a couple of people here, a couple of doctors coming in to talk about the 40th anniversary of the March 13th Grenada Revolution. Yeah, that's uh, coming up. Actually, if I'm not mistaken, this whole thing got started uh, last night. Dr. Malachi Dutton, who's the president of the Northwest Development Organization, he is going to be joined by Dr. Wendy Grenade, who is a senior lecturer in political science out there at the Cave Hill campus of the University of the West Indies in Bimshire, Barbados. All right? That's our interview this morning. Now, our main feature is captioned. You've probably seen that up on the website. Uh, it's captioned, a review of the revolution. This week, uh, Friday, actually. Friday, I had Brian put on here with us uh, for the Friday edition of Good Day Grenada. And um, somehow the revolution came up. And out of that, we decided that uh, we would have a couple of people here this morning to take a look at the revolution. A sort of review, if we will. You know, you know they're still debating whether it was... Uh, good or bad. Some are debating whether it was an intervention or an invasion. We're going to try and clear the ground on a lot of that stuff this morning. So Brian Pitt, whom I've described here as a civil society advocate, is going to be joined by Mr. William Joseph, who just this uh, past week actually published an article titled, uh, I think it was The Revolution. Uh, footprints or something like that about the revolution. It's on the GrenadaBroadcast.com website. You can check it out. So at about 10.30 this morning, Brian and Willie are going to be in here. All right. Now, having said that, let me take a look. Facebook, who day? Kipling is sending his blessings to everybody and asking you guys to share, share, share. Okay? Please share. Margaret. Supposedly, it move already. Rob me of my hour's sleep. R Margaret, come on. If I robbed you of an hour's sleep, would you mind, sweetheart? No, you wouldn't. Obviously, she does mind. Uh, Peter Bishop is saying, uh, 
George McLeish, good morning, sir. Well, now George is probably on there. See, um, kind of confusing here. I monitor Facebook two different places. On my switcher here, which is a little iPad, and on my main computer over here, which is a, a desktop PC. On the iPad, I only see those of you who have posted something. I see what you post. If somebody replies to what you post, I do not see it on my iPad, okay? I have to check here on my PC where I see your post and the person's responses. So I'm going to get that set up in just a wee bit, all right? Anyhow, uh, ha, ha, ha. Peter Bishop is saying good morning to Georgie McLeish. Cheryl Kalis, hey, Cheryl. We spring ahead in time, so we're on same time now with Spice. Yaman. People out there on Rumble Chat are still kind of slow. They're going like, shoots, boy, what time is it? Uh, George. Um, Mickelman Alexander is saying, good morning, have a blessed Sunday. Cheryl Caliste. Morning, nephew George McLeish. Oh, hello there. Well, Georgie McLeish, I'm honored to see you in the audience. Well, they let the cat out of the bag. You didn't think I'd find out, but we know you're there, Georgie. Uh, Lydia James, I'm very early for class today. Is Alan... <laughs> <laughs> is Alan on today? No, Alan is not on to give the man a break. But he's going to be with us on Thursday, every Thursday. All right. Uh huh. -huh. Anthea Rillo uh, is wishing everybody a happy Sunday. Alana Morris Van Tassel, so good to see you. Saying a blessed morning to all. The Revo is very divisive. Divisive. I hope the conversation can focus on what happened in Grenada and the OECS. The revel really imploded before the U.S. invaded. Good point, girl, and I hope you'll join in the conversation when these folks get in here. Um, oh, I haven't seen this one before. Manel Toussaint Green is saying good morning from Windsor, Ontario, where I bet you're freezing your Twinkies off. Nice to have you. Curtis Philip Jeremiah, saying good morning to everyone. Oswin Lewis, also saying good morning. And Reese Fran, hello, Reese. Reese is saying good morning uh, to George and my lovely Grenadian people. Locked on from Manchester in the UK, all across the pond, eh? Say hi to Lizzie for me, please. Uh, and Grenada Sunshine is saying, hi, Curtis. Nice to see you here. Welcome. Hey. Nice to see all of you all here this morning. Folks, we have a lot cooking here this morning, a lot. Before I go any further, um, even though I'm trying to be perky this morning, I have a bit of a heavy heart. This morning I heard from uh, somebody by the name of Elton Sylvester. Elton is out there in uh, Toronto, okay? And he was telling me that there's a gentleman who is a fan of this program, has been listening to this program for years. And uh, he has been hit by something that's uh, pretty serious, a brain tumor, okay? But despite that, I understand that... Uh, even though he's going through a very rough time. He's in the audience with us this morning. I can't say that I've ever met this gentleman, but just the mere fact that he has taken time off to, to watch this program over the years, uh, that moved me this morning to send up a prayer for this goodly gentleman. His name is Dean George. Dean, I understand that uh, you're watching this morning. And sir, I want you to know better days ahead for you. God is with you. He knows what you're going through. What are these days when you're talking with him? 
ask him to let you know what Georgie Porgy went through. And that's why I can sit here and look you right in the eye this morning and smile. I know the type of God we have. Be at peace, my friend. Be at peace. He loves you. And everything's going to be all right. Who said that, Bob Marley? Yeah. Well, even before Bob, God did. Okay? All right. Let me take a little break here. And by the way, Elton, thank you very much for uh, contacting me this morning. I have prayed for this gentleman. I've also prayed for you and your family. Okay? God bless you all. Let's take a little break here. We'll come back. Juve chocolates, cocoa nibs, and cocoa balls from Diamond Estate Grenada are now available at Amazon.com, Amazon.ca, Amazon.co.uk, and GrenadaMarket.com. Try their sensational touch of nutmeg and a touch of ginger chocolates. 75% dark and rich, 100% pure cocoa, and their 60% dark and sweet chocolate bars today. Amazon Prime members enjoy free shipping on these orders in the USA, Canada, and Europe. GrenadaMarket.com when you can't come to the island, the products of the island will come to you. With free island-wide delivery, Hubbard's building supplies and lumber departments continue to provide the best quality lumber, steel, tiles, plumbing materials, electrical, and general hardware supplies at competitive prices. We continually consult with builders, homeowners, and contractors to improve product range and services. Enjoy discounts where applicable, including the use of credit and debit cards. At Hubbard's building you supplies, can't come to the island, and the products lumber department, Caronage, we offer quality service, affordable prices, giving you the convenient reliable free island-wide delivery. Call 440-2087 for all your home improvement and building solutions. Grenadian General Insurance Company Strength and Stability Grenadian General Insurance Company Tell your friends, tell your family We cover household that's comprehensive Motor and even fire too on Scott Street, St. George's. For more information, call 440-2434. Tell everybody. Alrighty, folks, it's third, uh, coming up on 14 minutes after 9 o'clock, folks. We've now been, hello there, Clive. Clive Davers is joining us. He says, may peace, love, and joy be with all as we experience Daylight Saving Time and St. Patrick Day celebrations in Ontario, Canada today. Well, have a happy celebration, Clive, and say hi to Jackie for me. Good to hear from you. Jennifer Myers is saying good morning. Blessed Sunday to you and all your listeners. I'm sure they appreciate that, Jennifer. I know I do. Lydia James is saying prayers are going up to you, Dean George. God is able. He will see you through. Healing in Jesus' name. Hey, Lydia, you know what I do, eh? Hey, girl, thank you so much. I'm sure uh, Dean feels a lot better. And uh, Erne <laughs> Ernesto Jose says, Good morning, Principal G and Pilgrims. I am up and ready for another episode of Education Sunday. Hello, Jackie. Uh, good to see you folks here. Folks. Let's get to this week's edition of The Buzz, all right? And we begin with a reading from the Holy Scriptures. Romans chapter 12, verses 14 to 21. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful 
to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will be heaping burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. All right? Romans chapter 12, 14 to 21. Go on back. Check it out a little later on today when you got some time. All right? Now, the other heavy I have on my hands this morning is a letter, and I'm telling you, sit down, relax, put your feet up, because this kind of long letter, okay? But I thought it was important that you hear this. You often hear Grenadians talk about how investors, you know, foreign investors, have it so easy in this place, you know? They seem to get all the perks, and you know, those of us locals, we're scrunting, trying to get things going. By and large, that's true to a great extent. But what you're about to hear, folks, is a very sad story about somebody I've come to know over the last four, five years. This gentleman is a foreign investor who's been living here for the last 10 years or so. But guess what? He's had enough. He's decided to pack his bags, take off. Yeah. He has written a letter, which uh, I'm going to share with you right now. Kind of long, but uh, I think it's going to be worth your time to listen and see how much of what he's talking about you can identify with, you know, for your own self. Okay? Let me quote here. Dear friends, we have sold our home and will leave Grenada in a few days. So, it is time to say goodbye. I thank many of you for your friendship, the time we spent together, and many inspiring discussions. I'm also thankful for help received so often to solve problems and overcome obstacles. We came to the Caribbean in 2001-2002 aboard our sailing yacht, Seven Seas, as a stopover on our six-year circumnavigation. We looked out for a nice place in the sun from the BVI's to Grenada and purchased land in Egmont. After completing our long-distance sailing, we came back and built the house. Once we had settled down, I closely watched and analyzed the situation here. The problem areas were evident, could be defined and quantified. However, I did not see actions to resolve them, despite well-formulated well formulated strategy papers generated in abundance. I had the illusion that with my long and broad business experience, I could be of assistance to help improve the economic situation of the nation. What a mis 
judgment. During those ten plus years, many countries and many hundreds of millions of people have made substantial economic progress. The number of countries with consecutive six plus percent year on year growth rates is impressive. The people of those countries are feeling they are better off than they were years before. Some are in the same 12 degree north climate zone as Grenada is. Not so in Grenada and the entire Caribbean. At least I do not see it. Backbones for economic development are in the same desolate condition or even worse. Roads are as bad as they were 10 years ago or worse. The number of accidents is rising. Some blue-eyed people say the increased number of cars on the road is an indication of increased wealth. I doubt it. I believe it is only the mirror image of demographics. Those directly imported second-hand cars are mostly not properly maintained because of the lack of funds. Not an indication of increased wealth. Just about everything falling under ICT is a disappointment and severely restricts economic development. The service level of the ICT providers does not nearly meet the international level. Do not even think of Industry 4.0. While other countries will develop and use it and achieve growth, Grenada does not even have the infrastructure for it. Electricity has become slightly more reliable over the years. Damaged equipment in my house due to voltage peaks is less frequent than before. Grenlec might have done even more, but I do not blame them. The company is being bullied by, a, by the government on a fabricated issue. Every businessman or entity is holding back with investment because of such a hostile environment. Banking services are a fundamental pillar of a well-functioning economy. What I see today is more or less what I saw 10 years ago. This fact alone is a disaster. The same long lines at the counters. Banks seem to be proud of their basic e-banking solutions. I say they should be ashamed. The way we do money transfers is decades old in comparison to up-to-date solutions. Local banks are stealing hours of our productive time every month while the government is lazily watching this. Where local banks stand out is in bureaucracy. The world's banks follow FACTA rules, same rules for all countries. The way local banks handle these rules is a massive exaggeration. Again, lowering productivity of the economy. I'm very concerned regarding the NIS, National Insurance Scheme. The yearly performance on the fund is average at best. The minimal opening to the international market and, for example, a minor investment in equity, is too little, too late. There is no annual report 2013 and no report 2017. 
a combined report, 2013 and 2014, confirms indebtedness of the government year-end 2015 of 178 million EC dollars. That's equal to about 20% of the fund. What's wrong with this organization? It is outright dangerous to lend entrusted money, future pension income, to a government with a Standard and Poor's rating of SD, selective default, with little prospect of recovery. I am shocked that a government has the impertinence to use the pension fund of its people as a lender of last resort. The health sector is, in itself, reason enough for us to leave the country. We're not the only ones. Many Grenadian expats do not return after retirement because of this. I do not see improvement in health care for reasons, I think, I need not describe. Everybody knows them. It is tragic. We brought in urgently needed medication at the height of the chikungunya epidemic. The value was around 250,000 EC dollars. All new material in its original packaging on pallets. When the permanent secretary saw a table and chairs in the container, she begged to get it for her use, her own use. The minister did not even give me a phone call to say thanks. There have been other most unpleasant circumstances which caused us and other people to stop bringing and donating medical supplies to the island. A long practice of frequent shipments with hospital equipment and medication came to an end because of the frustration caused by the Ministry. Tourism is a cluster risk. It is pushed far too much in comparison to other industry sectors. The level of hospitality would need significant improvement to match world-class standards. Luckily, Flight times from and to the United States are short enough to attract those guests. One tsunami or airplane accident can ruin the sector for years. The GIDC, a substantial organization, is here to help potential investors establish business activities in Grenada. But why is it not generating visible results? It is not because of the leadership of the GIDC. The problem is government ministries. They are marginalizing and neglecting the GIDC. I presented a 40-page business case for a 12 million U.S. dollar investment in agriculture to the GIDC. It took them six weeks before the PS finally agreed to a meeting, and they failed to arrange a meeting with the minister. But in the same time frame, the PM made fun of Grenada's low rating in the Ease of Doing Business Index in his budget speech. 
the rating dropped even further the following year. Unfortunately, the GCIC, Chamber of Industry and Commerce, became unimportant over the last few years. What is left is a relay station which sends out messages to inform the public about seminars, etc., conducted by other people, and cricket games. Those of you who know me well are aware of many initiatives I took to bring some improvement. Let me mention a few. Just about every daily problem has been blamed on bad, or a lack of attitude in 2010-2011. Public and private sector people were of the same opinion, and a major change was widely desired. I took the initiative after consulting the then Prime Minister and identified the most experienced consulting company for Change Management, BCG, the Boston Consulting Group. Their list of successful worldwide reference projects was impressive. Thanks to my efforts, their number one practice, Leader for Change Management, came to Grenada to do an in-depth survey over several weeks and submitted a proposal in October 2011. I convinced them to do it free of charge. And they also paid for their flight tickets. Then the government did not even seriously look into the proposal. I'm of the firm opinion that this mistake, this neglect, was a capital mistake. The underlying problem is still the same today and will be tomorrow. Several success initiatives are needed to allow the private sector to flourish and grow. I mentioned the deficient quality of infrastructure before, a serious obstacle. Another one is the exact business environment, especially to attract new companies. To define specialized economic zones is a worldwide, well-established practice for this purpose. I visited as an invited guest, over 100 companies in special economic zones in various countries. They're tailor-made to specific requirements. In a detailed paper, I described what a special zone would look like in Grenada. The idea was discussed in several meetings with the PS and staff in the Ministry of Finance. Some months later, I saw the law which was approved by Parliament. The wording could not be more stupid. The people writing the law had no clue of the matter. I was never consulted by them. Needless to say, the special zone never came to life. The biggest failure was my attempt to put abandoned cocoa land into use again. My partner was a highly reputable biologist with an exceptional track record of successful international product pro projects in agriculture. The various meetings with ministers all followed the same script. They were late. 
And even though they already had documentation, they attended these meetings unprepared. They did not display interest. They made no clear statements and said goodbye with lip service or even less. After two and a half years into our effort, the PS proposed a Memorandum of Understanding, which we signed. To this day, the PS has not accepted any of my phone calls nor answered any of my emails. Grenada is the only country in the world with a monopoly situation for the export of cocoa and nutmeg. All other cocoa or nutmeg growing countries have long liberalized and prospered. The quantity of cocoa here is about one-fifth of what it was years before Ivan. The quality, of, the quality is questionable. I took samples given to me by the GCA to chocolate manufacturers for quality analysis. They failed in both cases. In the meantime, prices paid to the farmers have been reduced and witch's broom is spreading on the island. Farmers are complaining and lacking support. This very association refused to give us a license to let us operate as a company, grow cocoa on abandoned, unused land, and employ an estimated 300 people in permanent jobs. The chairman of the GCA, a pastor, sat with me at a table, looked into my eyes and said, Peter, by my reputation, you will get the license. The next thing he did was to sign a harsh letter stating the association's legal position to be the only organization exporting cocoa. The victims are the farmers and many unemployed people who could have a job and secure income a long time ago. The jobs are now in Guatemala. Why is nobody upset in this country? I'm writing this history because it displays good, real-life examples of why Grenada is stagnating, or even more likely, on a downward path. I'm aware of published growth figures, those from the government and the lower ones from the IMF. Maybe they're even true. Fact is, 90% of the people do not benefit. If there is some growth, it is concentrated in the South and for a few privileged people. The economy is significantly below its potential and neither diversified nor robust. A government with a plan to bring the country forward would look and act differently. In summary, I have given up hope for better conditions in Grenada. I have seen progress and positive development only in situations where we supported individuals 
directly. I'm thankful for having met interesting people who became real friends. We had many good discussions while having dinner at our home. I started to learn golf in Grenada. I played with the same instructor, caddy, partner, for all these years. Thank you for the company and thanks to the golf club. Every Saturday afternoon was also a highlight, hashing. Sincere thanks to all of the organizers. They do an amazing job in setting up the trails each and every Saturday. If there is one thing I'll miss, it will be the hashes. In leaving, I have no bad feelings because of all the disappointments. I wanted a place in a warm climate, and I found it. Would I do it again? The answer is no. If you, a recipient of this message, visit my home country, let me know, and we will meet. I will appreciate every email. No reason to lose contact. I wish all of you the best. The best possible in this real world. Sincerely, Peter Garnett. Folks, I really don't have much to say after that. Let me uh, quickly, hoo -hoo, hoo -hoo, hoo -hoo. let me take a quick look here. Mm -hmm. Oh boy, there's been a lot happening, eh? Jackie is saying good morning. Ernesto, Lydia, uh, Jennifer is there, Clive. Uh, Lydia says, prayers are going up for you, Dean George. So we talked about that earlier. God is able to heal you. Claim it in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lydia. Ernesto Jose says, Mr. G, so many activities last week in Grenada. Any videos? Beverly Mitchell is saying good morning. John Crow Alexander is also checking in. Bernard Gilbert is saying good morning to everyone. Uh, Coylan Nash is saying good morning. He's listening, sending his blessings to everyone. John Crow Alexander, I'm with seven C's on the banks, the roads, interest, and attitudes. Ah, you know him, eh? Uh, Ernesto Jose says, Wawa, I'm here listening in disbelief. What the hell is going on in, in Grenada? Bad management from the top comes down. The gives me the chills. So says Ernesto. Kipling says, Mr. Grant, can you please publish this letter on your website under the headline, The Truth in a Nutshell? Actually, that is uh, already programmed into the website and it uh, will be released at seven o'clock this evening. Uh, so you can go on back and read the whole thing. Devaney Leo says, Devaney Leo says, good morning, everyone, listening to SWGG. Blessings as we are alive to listen and participate in another information program. John Crow says, you're listening to 10 years of disappointments. Lori Bridgman says, good morning. This letter was well put together, and it is so true of listeners. Hold on a minute, hold on a minute, hold on a minute. Good morning. This letter was well put together. It is so true. I am so glad that the gentleman comes forward to share his experience in this country. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Alana Morris Van Tassel says, who is tuning in from Grenada? Or are the majority of listeners from outside the country? Agree with Mr. Francis's request. And Grenada Sunshine says, sad indeed. Sorry to see you go, but it happened. All righty, folks, let me take a little break here, and uh, we shall come on back. Helen. Hey, neighbor. 
Here's the bill I asked you to pay for me. How did you get your electricity bill to be so low? For one, we size our transformers just for what we need. And we unplug transformers, chargers and other devices when they're not in use. We also replaced our light bulbs with LEDs. They burn less energy, right? Much less. I even replaced the seal on my refrigerator door to keep the cold air in. And Greenleck is always advising us not to open the fridge too often. That's right. And my family washes and irons in bulk. With fuel prices changing all the time, how do you know if it is working? We pay attention to the usage history table. Over time, our average usage has decreased. So while Grenada can't control fuel prices, I can conserve energy and save money. Grenelec, energizing our Grenada. I'm always on the move. Training, traveling, competing. So it's good to know I have Quad Bank in the palm of my hand. Introducing e-banking, one of many customer convenience services from Grenada Cooperative Bank. And there's more to come. It's swift, simple, and secure. Welcome home. Grenadian General Insurance Company. Strength and stability. Grenadian General Insurance Company. Tell your friends, tell your family. We cover household as comprehensive. Motor and even fire too. Contractors always burn. Scott Street, St. George's. For more information, call 440-2434. Tell everybody. All righty, folks, it's now 12 minutes away from the hour. Let's get into our editorials. We begin with the editorial, which appeared in this past week's edition of the Grenada Advocate, and that was captioned, Looking Towards More Sustainable Food Systems. Earlier last month, over 150 specialists representing public and private entities, as well as NGOs, participated in the second global conference of the Sustainable Food Systems Program of the United Nations One Planet Network, which was held at the headquarters of the Inter-American Institute for Cooperation on Agriculture in Costa Rica. It was said that that it was said there that participants focused their presentations on the need to transform food systems. However, the authorities and specialists attending the event all agreed that any substantial progress in this area will demand political will, the development of joint initiatives involving all actors, innovation, and most of all, the inclusion of the agriculture sector and farmers who stand to play a pivotal role in the change that will be required. Now, if we were to take a closer look at this whole concept of a sustainable food system, we will find that it is one that supplies nutritious food that is accessible to all, and is one in which the management of natural resources preserves ecosystems, ensuring that current and future human needs will be satisfied. Advocates of the system are of the view that when it comes to food security, the closer producers are to homes and neighborhoods, the greater the access to more, more nutritious and affordable food. How food is grown and produced, what types of food are consumed, and how much food is wasted have major impacts on the sustainability of global, regional, and local food systems. That said, the Food and Agriculture Organization of the UN has been at the forefront of trying to advance sustainable food systems in the Caribbean. 
according to the FAO, Regional Office for Latin America and the Caribbean, in the last few years, integrated and holistic ways to address food-related challenges, such as reducing food waste and loss, improving farmer livelihoods, expanding access to affordable food, and lowering the risk of nutrition-related non-communicable diseases, have become more central to FAO efforts to meet the Sustainable Development Goals. The agency adds, one way that FAO is working to address these issues globally is training FAO staff and national counterparts in adopting food systems. Food systems touch on many aspects of society, from agricultural practices, businesses, farmers, consumers, government organizations, and the environment. By understanding the linkages between different areas such as agriculture, trade, health, and nutrition, rural livelihoods, and environmental sustainability, practitioners are better able to find the underlying causes rather than just the symptoms of unsustainable food systems and find ways to improve their performance. This cross-cutting approach has been the focus of a number of training sessions hosted by the FAO Sub-Regional Office for the Caribbean in the recent past. The sessions were part of the FAO's global training program on sustainable food systems and value chains. To date, 27 participants from across the Caribbean, including representatives from FAO and governments, have been introduced to the sustainable food systems and sustainable food value chain approaches to better understand how this thinking can be used in their day-to-day -day work. What we need to see here in the region now is greater utilization of all of this training. It is no secret that Grenada and its regional counterparts need to become more efficient in the area of food production. It is clear that if we are to effectively reduce our high regional food import bill, and if we are to effectively safeguard our food and nutrition security for years to come, we will need a comprehensive strategy that focuses on advancing more sustainable food systems and we will also need to make greater investments in sustainable agriculture. Pilgrims, that's your editorial from the Grenada Advocate. Tessa Barry on Rumble Chat saying good morning and congratulations to all the Grenadian artists and their teams on doing so well this carnival season in Trinidad. And Dennis out there, I'm um, yes, he's in Caricou says it's a smashing morning here in Kariku. Bit of a breeze. Good to see you, Dennis, folks. Take a break. Come back with the new today.
Alrighty, folks, it's now moved on to about two and a half minutes away from 10 o'clock. And uh, first set of in-house guests have arrived, and you'll be hearing from them after we hear the editorial from the new today. But first of all, just let me get back here to Facebook for just a wee bit. Uh, ta -ta -ta -ta. John Crow Alexander says, Peter Grunet, thank you for sharing this experience. Elton Sylvester says, good morning, Mr. George. Greetings from lovely Toronto. And thanks for your warm, comforting words on behalf of the Dean family. And Winifred Williams is saying good morning from Washington, D.C. Would you say hi to Donald for me, please? Is he there or is he on the road? Uh, John Crow says, while I agree, I also understand the limitations they are forced to work with, Margaret. Uh, he's responding to something Margaret said. I'm not sure what that was. Okay, here comes the new today. It is captioned, A Proud Moment. It was a well-deserved and historic victory last Friday night for Mr. Killer in the International Power Soaker Competition in Trinidad and Tobago. It was a proud moment for all of us in Spice Country as this was the very first time that a Grenadian had captured the one million TT dollar prize in the premier soca competition among the best in the region. Mr. Killer was widely expected to easily run away with a crown, but many of us at home were cautiously optimistic out of fear that he could fall victim to a blatant and very vulgar hometown decision in order to keep the prize and money in the neighboring Twin Island Republic. Over the years, the Trinities have tried to maintain their stranglehold on their own carnival activities, although they have opened up the market to other regional artists. The biggest victim was Short Shirt from Antigua who had Trinidad and Tobago eating from his hands in the early 1970s and was barred from taking part in the road march competition as an outsider in order to allow it to remain authentically Trinidadian. The change in fortunes came with the advent of promoter William Monroe when he started the International Soka Monarch Competition and opened it up to artists from all over the Caribbean. The victory of Mr. Keller last Friday night was no easy feat and came after many years of long and very hard work by a host of other Grenadian Calypsonians on the Trinidad circuit. The new today is not one to fall into the trap like so many others and boast about the exploits of some of the top artists in Trinidad with Grenadian roots like Sparrow, Brother Valentino, and Blue Boy. The fact of the matter is that these Calypsonians learned their trade in Trinidad and cannot be considered as the real authentic Grenadian Calypsonian, like the Jab Jab is to all of us. The road to Mr. Killer's victory was paved by many before him, like the so-called King of Jab, Talpri, who created a stir with Old Woman when he burst onto the Trinidad Soka stage about a decade ago. Grenadians should not forget the forerunners to the modern-day Soka artists. Since the way was cleared for them on the Trinidad circuit, by the likes of Black Wizard, Flying Turkey, Flying Cloud, and King of Jammu. Most Grenadians will not know the name Sean Mitchell, who hails from the Crowshoe area in St. Andrew. He is one of those born and bred persons from the Spice Isle who created an impact for himself, and in getting the Trinis to know that there is a lot of musical talent in Grenada. Sean has come from a musical family and is the nephew of King Ajamu, who is himself a very accomplished musician and can play, if not all, but certainly most musical instruments. 
This is a young man who has been a key member of the musical band of the King of Soca in Trinidad, Marshall Montano. Sean is an accomplished producer, bass player, and is known to have written a lot of winning soca and road march tunes for many artists up and down the Caribbean. The new today would also like to use this opportunity to applaud and recognize all the local art, all the other local acts who had Trinidad in a frenzy this carnival season with their work. Congrats are in order to Hector Mr. Legs Thomas, who placed third behind Mr. Keller in the Power Soka, as well as Vaughn, who took the third spot in the groovy version of the competition. Little Natty and Thunder, as well as Mandela, did not win, but did sufficient to convince Trinidadians that the Grenadian artistes mean business and came down with a plan to capture everything in Trinidad this year. The Trinis will never, ever underestimate us from 2019 and beyond, given the massive manner in which Mr. Killer stripped off the clothes of the overrated Iwa George and the likes, and easily copped the title of International Soka Monarch. Our artists cannot afford to rest, as the folks in Port of Spain will be thinking very hard on how to best take back the title. Okay, we continue. I have one more paragraph for you. Um, no one in the Spice Isle should be surprised if Guav gives the keys to the island's premier fishing village to Mr. Keller when he returns home for the first time after his massive achievement in Trinidad and Tobago. His victory is taking on the kind of atmosphere we saw in Guav when another of their sons, Karani James, struck Grenada's first gold medal at the London Olympics in 2012 in the 400 meter final. Like Karani, Mr. Killer came from very humble and poor background and did not allow that status to keep him down. This should be an inspiration to each and every person in Grenada, Cariacou in Pity Martinique, to get up and get. The new today expects government at the appropriate time to do something to, in honor of Mr. Killer and his victory last Friday night at Queen's Park in Port of Spain. Pilgrims, pilgrims, pilgrims. Yeah, we are running a little bit behind time here. So, very quickly on uh, Facebook, uh, Wilfred Williams saying howdy to you guys. Let's take a quick little break and then I shall be back with my guest right after this. Juve chocolates, cocoa nibs, and cocoa balls from Diamond Estate Grenada are now available at Amazon.com, Amazon.ca, Amazon.co.uk, and GrenadaMarket.com. Try the sensational touch of nutmeg and a touch of ginger chocolates, 75% dark and rich, 100% pure cocoa, and their 60% dark and sweet chocolate bars today. Amazon Prime members enjoy free shipping on these orders in the USA, Canada, and Europe. GrenadaMarket.com when you can't come to the island, the products of the island will come to you. Hey, Lynn. Hey, neighbor. Here's the bill I asked you to pay for me. How did you get your electricity bill to be so low? For one, we size our transformers just for what we need. And we unplug transformers, chargers, and other devices when they're not in use. We also replaced our light bulbs with LEDs. They burn less energy, right? Much less. 
I even replaced the seal on my refrigerator door to keep the cold air in. And Grenlec is always advising us not to open the fridge too often. That's right. And my family washes and irons in bulk. With fuel prices changing all the time, how do you know if it is working? We pay attention to the usage history table. Over time, our average usage has decreased. So while Grenada can't control fuel prices, I can conserve energy and save money. Grenelec, energizing our Grenada. I'm always on the move. Training, traveling, competing. So it's good to know I have Quad Bank in the palm of my hand. Introducing e-banking, one of many customer convenience services from Grenada Corporate Bank. And there's more to come. It's swift, simple, and secure. Welcome home. Alrighty, folks, it's now, let's see here, eight and a half minutes after the hour. And thank you very much for joining us. Time to say good morning to our guests. Take a look, take a look. We're pink. We got uh, nicely done up here. Over there on the right, that's uh, Dr. Wendy the Great, Wendy Grenade. And in the middle, we're seeing here Dr. Malachi Dutton. Good to see you again. Wendy, it's been a little while, isn't it? Yes, good morning, George, and good morning to your listeners. Yes, it has been a while. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, <laughs> something big must be happening in Grenada for you to be here, right? Huh? <laughs> Well, yes, indeed. Yeah, so you can tell us all about that this morning. Yes, sir. Morning, George. Good to see you. you, you How are you doing? One. I haven't seen you in a few years, man. Yeah, I've been doing some duty traveling. <laughs> You've been traveling? Yes. Okay. But let me let me join with you this morning to congratulate Mr. Killer yeah, yeah, yeah. for his exceptional mm -hmm. doing at the International Calypso Competition yeah. training. That. I think that's quite welcoming. Uh, at the same time, it is tremendously welcoming to be here to deliberate and conference with Dr. Granad to conference on the 40th anniversary of the Grenada Revolution, the activities planned mm -hmm. for such. The celebrating the 40th anniversary of the Grenada Revolution, it is celebrated by the Grenada Revolutionary Celebration Committee that committee is comprised of Mr. Ruggers Ferguson, known attorney at law, an interim president of the Grenada Revolutionary Memorial Foundation, Glenn Noel, who is the secretary of the National Democratic Congress. We have Dr. Wendy, my good sister here, Grenade. Grenade. She's a senior lecturer in political science at the University of Center of Cable Campus, and also she headed the Department of um, Sociology, Psychology, and Governance. Government. And Government. Mm -hmm. And interestingly, we have Dr. Winston Thomas, who is a, a Cuban trained medical doctor, and he is the president of the Grenada Venezuela Friendship uh, Society, and of course, myself. Uh, we should say that we have planned activities to celebrate the Grenada we have 48th anniversary of the Grenada Revolution to look at the internal and external challenges to its existence look at the extraordinary achievement the victories but instructively the mistake of the Grenada Revolution and it is our hope that that could be a platform for future development. You're making music to my ears. Very much so. <laughs> yeah, you know, because uh, this is one of the questions I have down here. I wanted to ask you, what sort of reaction have you been getting once it was known that you guys are commemorating the 40th anniversary? Because there are people out there, I made the point in one of my programs this past week, there are people out there who are helping, they don't want to have nothing to do with revolution because the revolution was all bad. But from where I sit, I have heard of an incredible number of things 
that were very good about the revolution, and it's been strongly advocated. If a lot of those things were still in place today, we would be a hell of a lot better off than we are today. So you know, I'm glad to hear that you guys are looking at it from both sides. Yes, it, it's from both sides. And just to say, uh, on the onset, there is no activity, especially revolutionary activity, that would not have, you cannot analyze the tremendous achievement, but also the misgiving. If you looked at the, all the revolutionary activities throughout the world, I think Grenada had been an example for the Caribbean. And that's the reason we have planned all those activities to celebrate the same. Coming, coming to it, we had a champ in concert that took place last night. We had a Good much yeah, appreciate audience there. We had all the kings in concert. Ijamo, uh, Scholar, Valentino. And instructively, it was the 50th anniversary of WZ. Ah. So that was quite, quite moving and touching. W the activity have started yesterday. We have had various activities. Uh, we have had hel health activities throughout Grenada Car and Cariku. It started from the 4th and it will go on to the 31st of March. Uh, we have moved toward the western side. It will terminate with a big health fair at Victoria that will be on the 38th of March. We also have got public education taking place. Professor will deliberate on that in, in, in two minutes, so I will not go into that. We, have ha we do have also on the 11th, on the 12th of March, that's Tuesday, uh, former Prime Minister of St. Lucia, Dr. Kenny Anthony, he will conference on the impact of the Grenada Revolution, uh, specifically the impact for St. Lucia. That will take place at 6.30 at the Grenada Center. So we are encouraging all Grenadians to come down to listen to former Prime Minister of St. Lucia, Dr. Kenny Anthony. We also have an exhibition taking place. That exhibition will take place from the 13th to the 15th of March where we will do, as I have said, you will see all photos, audios, a lot of things that people will not have actually realized. And it will highlight uh, the achievement, achievement in agriculture, agro-industry, tourism, infrastructure, the people democracy, what we call popular democracy, will be highlighted. But instructively, you will see all the respective laws that, was, that were put in place to ensure women participation, uh, to ensure youth participation. All those things will be uh, highlighted. Interestingly, we will have a book launch uh, on the 14th of March. That book, book launch will start on the, at 5 p.m. Mm -hmm. at Norton's Hall. We will, the book that will be launched, by its, the name of it is By Their Own Hands, by our own Grenadian, Dr. Dennis Bartolomeo, and a very good friend of ours from England, Dr. Steve Cushion. Uh, the book will be sold at a reasonable price. Uh, you'll, we will have about roughly 100 to 200 copies. Um, pe people that will attend it may be able to get it for $10. $10. And we also, on the 20th, 23rd of March, we will have a youth forum where the youth will deliberate on the impact on the Grenada Revolution. On Monday, we will have a Beyond the Headlines, where we will have three youths deliberating on the impact. And uh, Mr. Brian Lindsley, he will also deliberate on, on activities planned for the Grenada Revolution. So there is a lot of activities coming on, and um, it will terminate with a huge activity, a, a, um, a 
academic conference and I will let my good friend Professor deliver it on the academic mm -hmm. conference. Professor. Mm -hmm. Dr. Grenay. Yes, thank you very much, Malachi, and thanks again, George, for having us. And I too would like to congratulate Mr. Killer and uh, wish him all the best. So we're seeing you on stage next year? <laughs> <laughs> You'll be on stage too, right? If you go, I go. <laughs> yes. Before I speak about the academic conference, um, I want to just mention as well, tomorrow morning on GBN at 7 o'clock, Dr. Curtis Jacobs, who is a known historian, yeah. he would be there speaking about the historical significance of the Grenada Revolution. So I'm encouraging persons to tune in. And on, in terms of the public education, on Tuesday at the Tam CC, Dr. Nicole Phillips Dow and I would be conducting a session for um, Tam CC students and students from other institutions in the area. Um, we have planned a number of activities in terms of public education throughout Grenada and the Carico, and we hope to be able to speak about, discuss in a very honest um, way, the Grenada Revolution. Now, to the question of the academic conference from May 27th to 29th, and why did we choose those dates? Uh, May 27th is African Liberation Day, and May 29th, um, the birthday of the late Prime Minister Maurice Bishop. Mm -hmm. So we have in this conference, and it's called the Grenada Revolution 40 Years After, Commemoration, Celebration, and Critique, because we want to be able to bring balanced perspective um, to this, this, this event or experience. The main objectives, why are we having this conference? First, to commemorate the historical significance of the Grenada Revolution, not only domestically, but regionally and globally as well, because it was indeed significant. Um, we want to be able to not just commemorate, but celebrate the achievements. As you were saying earlier, George, there is a lot that we can learn from that period. Um, so we want to be able to see what worked, particularly in terms of the political economy. So we want to celebrate those achievements. We want to critique the contradictions and inherent flaws, because there were many as well. Um, and you were mentioning earlier, um, you know, there are two kinds of narratives. And, you know, one narrative demonizes the revolution. There's another narrative that romanticizes it. And in this conference, we really want to be able to look at it in what I like to call the totality of its complexity to understand what it was and to analyze it for the lessons that we can draw from it. Um, very importantly, we know that many of the younger generation don't know anything about the Grenada Revolution. So we are intentional about ensuring that the younger generation of Grenadian and Caribbean people understand the significance of it. What was it? Why did it happen? what happened during the period, you know, what happened since it collapsed. We want to be able to understand it. Now, we've sent out a call for papers, and widely, and some of the themes that we would cover, we're inviting papers on these broad themes, the Grenada Revolution, revolutionary thought, and the contemporary Caribbean, the life and legacy of Maurice Bishop. We want papers on that. Um, the NGM and experiences of Caribbean left movements. We want to invite papers on that as well. Then the Grenada Revolution, this is very important. History, memory, reconciliation, and healing. Um, we invite in papers on rethinking development for societal transformation. Another theme, education for liberation. Uh, then women, youth, and community empowerment. Arts and culture international relations and foreign policy, regionalism, challenges and prospects, and democracy, the rule of law, and human rights. Now, this conference is being organized by a conference planning committee. Dr. Professor Ian Batiste is a co-chair, along with myself. He is attached to SGU. Professor Antonia McDonnell is also at SGU. Professor Wayne Sandiford, is also um, attached to SGU, and as well as Dr. Damien Graves. Then we have Dr. Nicole Phillips Dow, who is the head of the UE Center here in Grenada. Dr. Curtis Jacobs, I mentioned earlier, historian, and Dr. Stephen Fletcher, who is a marketing consultant. So we have been planning um, and getting the logistics together. Now the conference will be held at the St. George's University, and we wish to. I wish to take this opportunity to thank SGU for partnering with us in this way. Now, I want to mention, George, and to your listeners, um, 
besides the panels th that we are inviting papers for, there are some key plenaries that we are trying to put together. One on the economic model of the PRG and the lessons for Grenada and the Caribbean in the present. And Professor Wayne Sandiford is organizing that. We want to be able to understand what was that economic model of the PRG and what can we learn from that model as Grenadian and Caribbean economies go through what they, um, they're faced with in the contemporary moment. There's another plenary, Voices from Within. Uh, we are providing a space for workers of the revolution, leader workers and workers, and those who lived through the period to share their experiences. And Dr. Rafael, sorry, Stephen Fletcher is organizing this as well. There's another plenary, the, the, the Caribbean left after 1983. Dr. Damien Graves is organizing this one, organizing this one, sorry. And Women's Empowerment, a plenary on this would be organized by Dr. Nicole Phillips Dow. And very importantly as well, there is a plenary on history, memory, reconciliation, and healing. We thought it was very important because we understand that a lot of people are still traumatized by that period. There's still a lot of pain. Um, and we want to be able to just speak about it. Um, and Doc, Professor Shalini Puri, she is a professor at Pittsburgh University, and she has done a lot of work. In fact, one of her latest books um, is called Operation Urgent Memory, where she's tr she did a lot of research within Grenada. So we've asked her to come to the conference to organize that plenary for us. Now, the final one is the life and legacy of Prime Minister Maurice Bishop. We thought it was very important on the 29th of May to have a very important plenary in his honor. Um, Dr. Curtis Jacobs would be organizing that one. And throughout the three days, Dr. Antonio McDonnell would be developing for us cultural and literary events that we'll ensure that we have during that time. We have two keynote addresses. Um, on the opening night, our own Grenadian, Professor Merle Collins. She's a Grenadian who is a professor at the University of Maryland. She will be bringing together the theme for us, the Grenada Revolution 40 years after commemoration, celebration, and critique. And on Tuesday the 28th, Dr. Didicus Jules would be our next Ooh. keynote speaker, and he would be speaking on education for liberation. Now, finally, in terms of the fee for overseas participants, they would pay U.S. $100 for the three days. For local participants would be EC $100 for the three days. Um, if someone wants to attend just for one day, it would be $40 EC, which would include a break. It would be free for all school children um, because we want to ensure that the younger generation have access. We know May is a very tricky month um, in terms of exams and all of that, but we hope that we can attract young people um, St. George's University, they've agreed to provide transportation so that we could ensure we have maximum participation. So, George, I sent you this morning an updated call for papers that we hope you can put on your site. Yeah, put up on the site. Yes, mm -hmm. and we really want to encourage Grenadians to participate in this conference because this, this, this is our history, and we want to be able to ensure that we discuss it in, in a very balanced way. So this is the academic conference. Do you know, uh, I'm sitting here with a little smile on my face and people are probably wondering well, what, what the hell Georgie is smiling about. But mm -hmm. it's because, you know, I've, I've been back in this country about 30 something years and I have done a lot of these programs trying to bring about some sort of healing. You know, Grenada mm -hmm. has mm -hmm. always felt bitter about that mm -hmm. period and I wanted to bring about a healing. But it was tough. However, I'm sitting here listening to you guys this morning, and I'm saying, hey, 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 hey wait a minute. Time to do another take on this. Mm -hmm. Because I think what happened in the past is that supporters of the revolution were pretty stubborn, pretty hard line. And now I have heard both of you folks here this morning admit, hey, we made mistakes. Yeah, there's a lot of good things about the rebel, but we made some mistakes. Yes, yes. And I think people could identify with that, Wendy. Mm -hmm. So I'm asking myself, are we at a turning point? Are we at a turning point? Now having, I want you to respond to that very quickly uh, because mm -hmm. there's some comments here I want to share with you from Facebook. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Mostly, you see, you, the, you there must be some healing with time and space. And the emerging theory 
with time and space will take care of everything. It's my hope. We would have had a revolution. The revolution, we do not have the revolution. So in fact, the mother beings of the states instructively not regardless of the mistakes. Malachi is having an argument with his headset. And not only his headset, but his, his glasses as well. All right. Try, try and resolve that issue here. Okay. You see, if you would leave some hair on your head, the, mic, the, the headset would have something to hold on to. But look at that clean head. I mean, it just slides right off. Malachi, come Thank on. you. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. So, because of that emergen emergence with space and time, I think now is an appropriate time to deliberate and conference on the revolution. Interestingly, in University of Magill, they will be deliberating on the Grenada Revolution. In Australia, New Zealand, all over the world. So why it is that in Grenada, we cannot deliber deliberate on the revolution? We have had three revolutions. We have had the 19... The Federal Revolution, which is in 1979, we have had the 1951 Revolution, and of course we have had the, we, the 1979 Revolution. So there is a dialectic relationship within those three revolutions, and in the exhibition that also will be, will be highlighted. Mm -hmm. And it is crucial that we have had a lot of things written on the, on the revolution, but by foreigners, mm -hmm. less by Grenadians. So we must create an environment for right. Grenadians to deliberate and conference on the, on the Let me revolution. Hear you, what I can say um, to add to what Malachi has said, I'm a member of the Caribbean Studies Association. And I remember in 2008 in Colombia, in an island called St. Andres, we had a, a plenary on the Grenada Revolution, and George people were in tears, in tears. We came to Grenada with that conference in 2013, Caribbean scholars. And I remember Dr. Dedicus Jules and others on a panel that I was chairing. The place was so emotional. But what has happened, as Malachi is saying, outside of Grenada, we've had several conferences on the Grenada Revolution. What has happened within Grenada? Because the way the revolution ended, there was silence. And, and Professor Mull Collins has written a lot about this silence. There was silence. There was what I call an induced amnesia in the schools. Don't teach about it. Don't speak about it. Um, you had a long, prolonged court trial where the left kind of went on the ground after. And uh, because there was such a divide, people were not speaking about it. What I think has happened with time, um, there is a sort of bridging of the divides, um, I would hope. And now within Grenada, a discourse is emerging. We saw you at Lane's book, We Move Tonight. We saw Teddy Victor's book. Um, I myself wrote on the Grenada Revolution Reflections and Lessons. Um, Professor Patsy Lewis has written extensively as a Grenadian herself. So we are seeing after 40 years, and we know 40 years in, in biblical terms is, is very important in terms of moving from a wilderness into a sort of promised land. And we would want to hope that after this week's activities, after the conference in May, that we would have some sustained engagement on the Green of the Revolution. Um, some of us have put together brochures that we hope that we could develop into apps where we can make it friendly for younger people. What was this thing called the Grenada Revolution? It didn't just drop from the sky. What were some of the global forces, the regional forces, the domestic forces that led to that event in March? Okay. What happened during, during that period? And importantly, the Grenada Revolution and the Caribbean region, because perhaps a lot of people don't know the extent to which the Caribbean region was impacted yes. by the... There was this promise of a new kind of Caribbean future. There was this promise that we could have an alternative non-capitalist path to development. So it wasn't just about fighting Geary and a domestic kind of um, experience. It was that, but it was it stemmed from a long history. And we have to be able to tell the history. We have to tell our story. And um, I, I, I am, I'm taking this very seriously, George, because I think my generation is the last generation that lived through the period of the Grenada Revolution. And um, fortunately for me, I was not on any side. I was, just, I was a teenager in a Gary Ice household. So I was not on any side. I, 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 I don't have any kind of um, 
any kind of baggage, if I may use that word. So, so, so those of us who can study it objectively and speak about it must do so. And I think this is a good moment where we are facing our history, all of it, in all its manifestations, in all its dimensions, because we must. We must embrace the history for what it is. And I think this is a moment that we are beginning a conversation within Grenada. It will be painful because it's a very sensitive issue. And we have to recognize and be cognizant of the fact that many people still feel pain over this. Yeah. So we yeah. have to be sensitive. We have to know that even as we celebrate, we must be able to do so in a way that acknowledges that the society has not healed. We have not had any kind of psychological um, help for people who would have gone through so much. Yeah. Yeah. But at the same time, that must not prohibit us from celebrating what was so good in four and a half years, a small country achieving so much, an international airport, we had an agro-processing plant, we had an asphalt plant, we had a mixed economy where you twinned state planning with, with, with the private sector and with cooperatives, you, you twinned education with agriculture, with new tourism. You know, George, we speak about food security today. When they said eat what you grow and grow what you eat, that, in fact, was the definition of food security. And, and we have to go back to some of the slogans of the revolution. Each one teach one. We learn together. Okay. How, you know? So I think it's, an, it's a good moment we're in. A good moment. And uh, there's somebody here on Facebook, uh, Alana Morris Van Tassel. She says, this is good. This is good. But there are also a lot of other comments that I want to share with you guys because we're running out of time. First of all, on Rumble Chat, there's a young lady by the name of Tessa Barry. Tessa is in Trinidad. I think she's in Trinidad right now, a student of UE down there. Mm -hmm. And she says, George, every year the Grenada Students Association at the University of the West Indies St. Augustine campus holds a panel discussion on the Grenada Revolution. This is usually done to enlighten Grenadians, Grenadian students on this time in our history. The students are always thankful because at home, George, this topic is too hush hush. Yes. Yes, and, and if I may say, last October, the Students Association at St. Augustine, which the student is a part of, they wrote me and asked me if I can do a lecture for them. And I did a voice, a voice recording of a lecture that I sent to them and that they used. And, and other lecturers as well do that. In Kevin, we do the same thing. Okay. Yeah. Somebody named Mary Campbell, I think Mary is in New York. He says, yes, George, the revolution made mistakes, but it is only now being admitted because the objective is political power, rehabilitation, and renewal. So mm -hmm. says Mary Campbell. Mm -hmm. Yes. Malachi? The, as I have said earlier on, eh, who would have thought that we would have had, we would have been celebrating and we would have what we refer to as a political garden in the name of Sir Eric Machigiri. Mm. But we could have done that with healing because of space and time. And a lot of Grenadians feel proud of walk, walking in into the political garden and admire yeah. Sir Eric Gary. Yes? Okay. That would not have been able to, 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 to take place probably 30 years ago or 35 years ago. But with space and time, it can happen. Okay. And that's because of healing. And this is where I want to come in. Because of, of time and space, because of the healing, I think we have been doing that before. But presently, the celebration committee are convinced that this is the right time to move on. Right. And there's a lot of people, not only the celebration committee, but come next year, you'll have respective committees and respective parish organizing to celebrate the revolution. All right. So it's, it's emerging. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, welcome back, Zola. Na, 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 na. Alana Morris Van Tassel is asking here, will any of these public events be available either via live stream or taped for mm. viewers outside of the country? Good question. I mean, you, you just rattled off a whole lot of things going on. Well, it's not just the people here, the people out there. Mm. Very interesting. Some of the activities, eh? We have deliberated on that, 
but we have just started and as you know it takes mm -hmm. it takes to do that come next year we are convinced those things will be covered and um, everyone should be able to 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 tune on in fact we are trying our best that when dr kenny anthony deliberate and conference on tuesday that will be live throughout not only grenada but the, the caribbean right. on the whole john crow alexander says i'm waiting i hope they plan to get books and study in the classrooms and not just feel good seminars oh yes john crow um this is a work in progress and um, it's something I am committed to, and I know many others are committed to as well. Um, and we, we will ensure that we sustain this energy um, and get books, books that would be appropriate for different levels, um, not just for the university level, but so that a primary school child should be able to pick up a book and say, um, you know, what, what is Grenada's mm -hmm. history? And key moments, pivotal moments, activities, accomplishments, and I think it's very important. We have to work on different levels. We have to work yeah. through CXC. Um, we have to work through the Ministry of Education here and other ministries of education throughout the Caribbean. And I'm sure that with time, um, I picked up a junior English revise in Barbados yes. last week, mm -hmm. and I was so happy at the end of it to see something called Introduction to Civics. What is government? What is the state? What is the OECS? What was the West Indies Federation? And we're getting somewhere. There's a long road to still travel. But um, I'm sure in the next 10 years or so, if we, if we plant seeds now, we can reap a good harvest. Kipling Francis in New York has another question for you. Can someone give me a reason why I should celebrate the revolution after spending 755 days in detention with no charge whatsoever? I would take that. And Kipling, um, I, I, I feel your pain, and you have a right to feel how you feel, because you would have gone through something that you should not have gone through. Uh, even as the revolution did a lot of good, I think there were grave human rights violations. I think it's well documented, the human rights violations. You may have nothing to celebrate, and I agree with you. And this is why we have to be sensitive to pain like yours because we can't dismiss it because it was part of the process as well and um I'm, I'm really sorry you had to go through that and you you may never have anything to celebrate because for you the experience was not a celebratory one mm -hmm. um what i can say though we have to find space for healing Kimblin. we have to find space where we can confront all that went wrong even as we celebrate all that went right. So it's a very delicate balancing act that we have to do. But I, don't th I think it would be unfair to you for anyone to say to you, you must celebrate. Right. Because there's nothing for you to celebrate, really. I think we should invite her to come and um, deliberate. Yes. Uh, in him, him. Him, yeah, mm -hmm. to deliberate mm -hmm. the, on the 29th of May. Yes, in, uh, the inter yes at the conference. That's a good idea. Because that the conference is about that, George. Mm -hmm. The conference is about the achievement, but instructively, also the mistake yes. and we can only go forward if we if we take both of them into consideration yes. absolutely and, and a lot of things have happened during the revolution because why remember we have had internal and external challenges mm -hmm. and due to that a lot of mistakes have made yeah, yeah. and um we we need to, to to deliberate and confess on it to hasten the days of happiness yeah. and I, I must say to george um the, the three days would never be sufficient we need some kind of sustained thank you thank you continuous right. spaces of di for dialogue and bridge building and healing and i think we we have to take that on board as one of the outcomes of this year's um commemoration we have to say what next what then do we do to ensure that we bridge the divides and that we deal with psychological issues that came out of that period right. mm -hmm. margaret is also margaret is in new york she is responding to kipling she says kipling to each his own or her own you do not have to based on your experience and understandably so just like you were saying wendy mm -hmm. however yours was not the only experience 
and we need to explore all the experiences. So yes. says Margaret to Kipling, essentially yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. Ernesto says, whenever we're talking about development, the PRG will receive an A+. But whenever we're talking about governance, not too many people happy, mm -hmm. because some people still hurting from past experiences during the 1979 to 1983 eras, mm -hmm. okay? Fitzroy Adams says, for a fact, the fastest Grenada ever developed mm -hmm. was from 1979 to 1983. Mm -hmm. So says Fitzroy. Laurie says, Laurie Bridgman says, good morning to chairwoman. I am inspired by your move to get the true happening off our revolution. I guess she meant the true happening, I don't know, of our revolution. People listening to you guys. Mm -hmm. They're really listening to you guys. John Crow says, Kipling Francis, you can celebrate by sharing your experience. We cannot undo what happened to you. Malachi is one of those people Cord spoke about in his book, Unprepared. Did you know you were referred to in a book? Think Not really, I don't think so, because I don't, I don't think so. Laurie Bridgman says, please put up a bulletin board in memory of Jamar Belmar, falling, falling sister, long live sister, you will not be forgotten. Peter Bishop says, what will be important is streaming of the conferences and recording of the events. So our history will remain with our people. Mm -hmm. Take note, guys. Yes, yes, yes. So we're looking for sponsorship to ensure we can do all of that. Um, so we speak to the business community and so. All right, good. I think uh, Ernesto Joseph says, uh, I think it's part of our history and it should be to teach in our schools. We already lost. We already lost on... Please, Ernesto, please. Mickerman Alexander says, naming the airport MBIA was a great part of the healing that is taking place across Grenada. Mickerman Alexander also says, naming the airport, yeah. That is, boy, you guys are gone ballistic this morning. That change of time really screwed up. Yeah, yeah it's, it's it? really well fast. Huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> You um, see, people may ask, why not celebrate the revolution? But when you looked at the, the gateway towards our developmental pathway, I'm talking about the international airport. was built by the Cubans. The hospital, it was built by the Cubans. We looked at the stadium, which built by the Chinese, and that, was, that relationship was established during the revolution. So there is a, and during the revolution, remember, we would have had one of the, the highest economical growth, but instructively, we would have had also the lowest rate of unemployment and poverty. We would have purchased two banks for only two EC. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so these tremendous achievement ought to be celebrated. I agree. Zola in, uh, Zola is in uh, Amsterdam. Mm. Hey, Zola. Shh. You know Zola? No. <laughs> <laughs> Zola says, the journey of the revolution is certainly not over. The revolution was not about weapons or murder. It was about the freedom of our people to choose the path of freedom from the hands of colonialism. Mm. She also goes on to say, and I'm reading this for the first time, so please forgive me if there are any screw-ups. She says, and there are people out there talking about the revolution who have no clue of what they're saying. Yet the men and women who paid a price so heavy for what America and England did, they murdered your leader and blamed it on the black man. So says Zola. Mary Campbell says, George... Here, intellectual dishonesty, we should invite, but never was the process at the inception to involve the pain of citizens. Now, here's a... 
Wendy, I notice you're frowning. Uh, I think the change in time has left a little, some people a little bit dizzy this morning. Uh, some of the stuff I'm reading here, I don't understand, mm -hmm. but I read it because I believe it's important. Mm -hmm. Even though mm -hmm. I may mm -hmm. not agree or understand, mm -hmm. it's important that people be heard. That's yeah, just of my course, advice. of but, course. But it's of crucial, course. it's crucial. Okay. Of course. Uh, Alana Morris Fantasso says, listen, there was a Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Grenada set up in 2001. It was under-publicized and under-supported. I wonder if this conference is interested in looking at their findings, successes, and failures, and building upon work already done. Mm -hmm. Great comment. Yes, a great comment, and I would want to invite that, um, that person to submit a paper. Um, on that topic, we'll be happy to, to, to have such a, a paper delivered at the conference. Alana, did you hear that? Alana Morris, let me write that name down, uh, Wendy. Alana Morris Dash Van Tassel. Indeed, that opportunity is given to anyone that want to, to conference and present anything on that day. That would be quite welcoming. Linda Sawney, Lizda Sawney says she is watching from Bowie. I imagine that's Bowie is in Maryland, is it? Bowie, yes. Bowie is Maryland. Yeah, okay. B-O-W-I-E, yes. She says SGU is able to broadcast this conference. In 2010, I was able to work with someone to share the Sickle Cell Conference, which was viewed here in D.C. and elsewhere. Bernard Gilbert says, the good of the revolution outweighs the bad. And finally, guys, I say finally because I have some other guests waiting outside. Kipling Francis says, in 1988, I had a life-saving operation in Canada. No odds to live, as was said by the operating doctor, or because of what was done to me in the villa in Satares. They stretch me until my until an artery busts. Now here's somebody who's suffering, and that's understandable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, folks, Wendy. Uh, I mean, uh, Wendy and Malachi, we could sit here for the rest of the day. Yeah. We've got <laughs> a couple of other people with a different mm -hmm. perspective coming in a little bit. Hold mm -hmm. on a sec. Tessa Barry says, "Would there be a call for papers?" for the conference, and when will the call be out? Is that the one you sent to me? Yes, the yes. call, yes, we okay. have an extended deadline. Tessa, this morning they emailed me something, and uh, sometime this afternoon I'm gonna stick that up on the website so you guys can go check it out, okay? Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you very much, and Thank to you your listeners much. as well. Nice to have both of you. Mm -hmm. Dr. Malachi Dotton, who is the president of the Northwest Development Organization, and Dr. Wendy Grenade, who's a senior lecturer in political science at the University of the West Indies, Cave Hill in Barbados. Folks, that's gonna do it for that segment of today's SWGG. It's now 10 minutes before 11 o'clock. Let me take a little break here and we'll come on back. Juve chocolates, cocoa nibs, and cocoa balls from Diamond Estate Grenada are now available at Amazon.com, Amazon.ca, Amazon.co.uk, and GrenadaMarket.com. Try the sensational touch of nutmeg and a touch of ginger chocolates, 75% dark and rich, 100% pure cocoa, and their 60% dark and sweet chocolate bars today. Amazon Prime members enjoy free shipping on these orders in the USA, Canada, and Europe. GrenadaMarket.com when you can't come to the island, the products of the island will come to you. Hey, Lynn. Hey, neighbor. Here's the bill I asked you to pay for me. How did you get your electricity bill to be so low? For one, we size our transformers just for what we need. And we unplug transformers, chargers, and other devices when they're not in use. We also replaced our light bulbs with LEDs. They burn less energy, right? Much less. I even replaced the seal on my refrigerator door to keep the cold air in. And Grenlec is always advising us 
not to open the fridge too often. That's right. And my family washes and irons in bulk. With fuel prices changing all the time, how do you know if it is working? We pay attention to the usage history table. Over time, our average usage has decreased. So while Grenada can't control fuel prices, I can conserve energy and save money. Grenelec, energizing our Grenada. I'm always on the move. Training, traveling, competing. So it's good to know I have Quad Bank in the palm of my hand. Introducing e-banking, one of many customer convenience services from Grenada Cooperative Bank. And there's more to come. It's swift, simple, and secure. Welcome Folks, let me see here now. Accurately, it's uh, four and a half minutes away from 11 o'clock Sunday morning. Now, um, I've got a couple of gentlemen sitting here, and I just want to spend a minute explaining how this, this session came about. On Friday morning of this week, I was speaking with uh, Brian Pitt on Good Day Grenada. We were talking things in general, and then something about the revolution came up, and Brian mentioned that he'd read an article which Willie Joseph had written about the, the revolution. And Brian had this concern about, you know, something people have often expressed, whether it was an invasion or an intervention, all right? So I thought, well, why don't you guys come in here and discuss on Sunday morning, which it was, all right? I think it was yesterday, Brian called and said, you know, look, why don't, why don't we, uh, instead of debating this issue with the folks who have just left here, why don't we just talk our business about the revolution? Talk to Willie. Willie says, yeah, forget about this, whether it was invasion or intervention. That's kind of limiting this thing. Why don't we just review the revolution? 
All right. So here are the reviewers. First of all, there is Mr. Willie Joseph, center screen, wearing purple. <laughs> and on the right of your screen is Mr. Brian Pitt. Gentlemen, good morning. How are you doing? I, 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 I see to the man on my right, to the screen's left, with purple. <laughs> uh, well, well good morning, man. George. And you ready to speak? Yes. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, George. Good morning, uh, William. Uh, good morning to your viewers and listeners, George. Um, it's a pleasure to be here this morning. Very interesting topic we have discussed this morning, um, led by an article written by William Joseph, who um, is, is, a, is a good orator. Uh, and and uh, um, I, I believe we would um, benefit all from William's conversation this morning about the revolution, legacy, and footprint. You know, I, I feel so honored having both of you guys here because I know that when you two people speak, mm. people actually listen. So uh, I'm glad to have you guys here. What was the title of your article, uh, Willie? <coughs> oh, it was The, uh, the Revolution, um, Legacy and Footprints. Legacy and Footprints. And that's, it's on several sites, but yeah. it's also up on the GrenadaBroadcast.com website. Mm -hmm. You're not going to hear anything in there, oh, so stop okay. pointing your ears. Okay. So. It's just you and me. Um, okay. All and right. just just promise me that you won't do like uh, Malachi a little while ago and lose your headset because <laughs> you don't have hair on your head. If not, I'll just go get some crazy glue and stick it on. Yeah, J George. Yeah. Uh, you know, I I I, I want to start the conversation by asking really this very simple question because when I read this article by William, it's the first time I've read a, a, a piece on the revolution between 1979 and 1983 which seemed to me to be very honest about what happened in that period of time. And I wondered um, to myself, then I'm going to ask you really the question now, um, what prompted the concept of legacy and footprint, William? Mm -hmm. Well, now I could say good morning to uh, the listeners and viewers um, and to your good selves, George and Brian. Uh, I, the, the key word really is honesty. The concern to be um, as honest as possible in a period where the young population, the young Grenadian needs to be informed because he's interested to know what really happened. And, and, and beyond what happened, um, we must cause him to be more interested in the lessons for tomorrow, the lessons for the future. So um, that is that is the genesis of it. Um, uh, the revolution obviously ran its course over four and a half years. Some things were done. It attempted to answer the development question in a particular way in the post-independence period. And it also attempted to answer the leadership question. And these are two fundamental questions of nationhood, leadership and development. And so, and so um, while that uh, really was, to me, the central focus, uh, then one had to uh, uh, give an honest account of what happened in those two areas. So on the development side, um, one could identify some specific things and classify them as being of legacy value. And then um, on the other side, um, there were some footprints. The footprints are those things that people either follow or refuse to follow because they are so unworthy, they are so dangerous, they are so wrong. And I think in terms of the Grenada going forward, we ought to know those things that ain't going to help us, that are going to pull us back. We're talking essentially about conduct issues. And I think that is the context in which I try to um, present a balanced view on the, the experience of the revolution. William, 
I, I, this year, we're celebrating 40 years, and I think there is a celebration committee um, that is celebrating 40 years of, um, of the revolution, 1979 to 2019. And during that period of 40 years, William, I've always heard the positives of the revolution. <laughs> People um, loaded the revolution, and even the committee that is now celebrating uh, this, this aspect of the revolution always talk about the positives, and they don't seem to want to address what could be considered the footprint. Do you recognize that? Yes, um, it's a very important um, issue, and therefore it raises the question of honesty and dishonesty, and whether a duty is owed to the Grenadian people um, in this period to engage with them on a very honest footing. Listen to me. I have published this view more than once, so I will publish it again right now. You cannot claim March 13th and disown October 19th, mm. really, because the revolution in terms of time had a, a beginning at March 13th and it ended on or about October 19th, on or about. I say honor, honor about because if you deepen the analysis, in a sense, the revolution ended uh, from the very day that they put Morris under house arrest. Mm -hmm. That's when it ended, right? So that in the context of things, invasion, uh, intervention, and so on and so on, one of the things that we'll find when we get, when we get to that point is that the, the Americans did not end the revolution. Mm -hmm. The, in the, 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 act, the military action by foreign forces did not end the revolution. The revolution ended when Morris Bishop was put on the house arrest. So that is a very important thing. But let me tell you this too. In 2015, there about a group of, of, of Grenadians um, who uh, clearly were sympathetic or continued to be sympathetic to the revolution started something that they call Grandation. It was a foundation that they established and so on. And they equipped that foundation with a set of political and other purposes. Now, one of them, very interestingly, and, and you've made the, the comment, uh, um, and I've taken note of it, is, is that they say that one of their tasks was to preserve the positive memories of the revolution. Mm. So, it has always intrigued me that the very people who ended the revolution, who caused it to come to an end, are now saying to us that we are the custodians of those good things of the revolution. You can't be. So let me dramatize it further, and then I'll stop. You remember the South Africa situation with apartheid and the clerk? Mm -hmm. Suppose the clerk had declared that his mission was to preserve the positive memories of apartheid. <laughs> Where would South Africa be today? Yes. So there you are. <laughs> yes, yes. But see, William, this is... My point, and, and, and George mentioned it earlier, of measuring uh, the revolution and the demise of the revolution and the events of October uh, 1983 is as follows. I ask two simple questions. Where were you between the, 18th, the 19th and the 25th of uh, October, um, 1983? And what were you doing? And only because uh, in talking to a young, a young person recently, they referred to what happened in October as an invasion. And I said to myself, okay, why do you consider this an invasion? I was here and I was under house arrest. So I was glad to be rescued, yeah. William, because for the days between the 19th and the 25th, I was under house arrest with an order from those people who had me under house arrest, the Revolutionary Military Council, to be shot on sight if I did not obey the orders of the Khufu. So there were two sets of people. There were people who considered it an invasion at that point in time, who were those people in charge, the RMC, and those people who were rescued 
who those people under house arrest. And, and that discussion formed my mind into whether or not the conversation I've been hearing uh, in these 40 years of revolution was an honest conversation. Mm -hmm. William? Yeah. Well, you know, clearly a lot of it has been very dishonest. And we are getting into a period, it's, uh, it seems to me, where a lot of it is also going to be very, very revisionist. In other words, people are going to attempt to rev rewrite the thing, yes. putting in all kinds of stuff that never really belonged there, and applying all kinds of academic methods to try and present us a different picture mm -hmm. of the thing. So we have to be wary, we have to be concerned about attempts to, rev re to, rev to rewrite that, that history. But let's go more specifically to the end period. Now, one of the first things we must say is that once the revolution came to an end with the putting of Bishop on the house arrest, those who remained never enjoyed legitimacy. They, never, they were never recognized as legitimate. Because the people's leader ah, was the arrest. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it takes us to this very, very powerful aspect that, that in a sense must guide all of us who are involved or interested in the politics. The place and role and significance of the culture of the people. The culture of the people. And notice that uh, I think I published this view, that, that Maurice Bishop was not made leader by the revolution. The people made Maurice Bishop leader since 1976. Mm -hmm. So when the NGM and revolution purported, oh, uh, they were so wrong. And so it shows, uh, sh showed up the, uh, the, 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 the two sides of this thing, that you could have a culture mainstream in which the people existed, and then you could have a group of individuals, a very small and an, an elitist group, trying to represent themselves and not being in sync with the culture of the people. And I give you this little laughing point before, before I shut up. You notice that when the thing came to an end, you know, all of them ran to Western countries. Not a man <laughs> went to a, to a communist or socialist country. All of them went to capitalist countries. Eh? The culture was speaking. Well, let, me, let me give you another laugh since we're laughing, William. Yeah. I note that in those 40 years, a lot of the people who were associated with the RMC, who denied us Grenadians of legal process or due process between 1979 and 83, found rescue or refuge in the law <laughs> a lot of them are either lawyers or yeah. working in firms of law or fighting to be associated with law. I, I find that very amusing. <laughs> well, I think one of the things you could see, I, I, I didn't want to comment on that directly, <laughs> but, but more broadly, that money has been available to these people. Mm -hmm. It's very clear. Money, back then and continuing to this very day, and that's why they could launch this, this, this program of activities for how many months they want to celebrate it? A long period of time to celebrate the positive memories and so on. Mm -hmm. so there's money. So, so one might ask, where's the money coming from? Who is so sold on this thing that they prepare to put their money behind it? They put their money behind their education. Mm -hmm. Now they're putting their money behind the propaganda. You see, and therefore, who is the target? The target is a young Grenadian. So it seems to me that some other people need to mobilize and organize themselves and get some money to speak to the young people regarding the footprints of the revolution. Because if you leave the space open, they are going to run freely into the harbor mm -hmm. if they are not challenged. If there is an alternative view that says, okay, yeah, you know, you build this and you build that, but here is your footprint. 
And given what that footprint is all about, the young Grenadian needs to be educated. He needs to be on guard that in terms of leadership, his interest in developing country and so on, he or she does not follow that route. William, there are two sets of people, two groups of people in our conversation that comes to mind. One I call the vocal minority. Those are the people that are making the noises now that have found the money to promote this positive side of the revolution. And there's a silent majority, um, people who just sit back and listen. But I've always contended, William, that the University of the West Indies is an academic institution and a learned institution in the Caribbean. It is their responsibility, I believe, to fund programs or projects that will, in fact, report on the honest aspects of what took place in Grenada between 1979 and 1983. Now, I don't know who would lead that discussion with the University of the West Indies, but I suspect and I believe that somebody needs to talk to these guys about, listen, we need to have some research done. And I'm hoping after I've read this article, William, that this article will promote some discussion in this area of honest writing or text that will, that will instruct our young people. Mm. What do you think? Well, I will never argue against, um, in fact, I don't think it is wise to argue against um, resorting to or look, looking towards the University of the West Indies or indeed the university here in Grenada, St. George's. Yes. Mm -hmm. To help the public to understand issues in public affairs. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Listen, we became independent in 74. I was a boy at school. And I know and continue now unto my old age that no one taught us anything about democracy, about development, about governance, about you name it. So we are a people who have been, in a sense, chasing donkeys. We're groping in the dark for a long time. And, and, and institutions of higher learning might w be well placed to assist us in bringing understanding to what we have experienced and what we see before our very eyes. So I would say that. Having said that, I think also that there are lots of people here in Grenada who are practicing. In other words, they, they've gone through university life and so on. They've experienced the university of life in other ways. And they're all from their different fields and so on, well able to contribute to a conversation on this on this issue the problem for us is that the society is not organized um to have that those kinds of arrangements whereby people are educated on these important things we've never had it there is a need for it right so we need for example in my view to transition from civil society to responsible society how do we get people with resources in Grenada to help to contribute to, to raising the awareness and the understanding and the knowledge of younger generations of Grenadians on nationhood and all of these things that are involved in there, leadership and so on. I think that's how we could begin to move the needle. Um, the universities, yes, both UWI and the one here, and then people in Grenada, other citizens, others of us who are well able who are well able to contribute to the kind of conversations that you, that you are proposing. How do we wake up the silent majority? Well, you know... If they're sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. or, is it, or is it that it, it's very convenient uh, right yeah. now for them to remain silent? Um, One this, of the... This, this idea of silence, yes? Mm. I, I just want to share something here that just popped up on Facebook. Somebody named Laurie Bridgman listening to you guys, she says, Peter and Nazim should be watching. I would like to hear their thoughts on this. 
Well, well, I mean, you guys can phone them when we get off the air and send them <laughs> to the website and tell them to take a look. Uh, uh, but I'll t- I'll t- I'll t- I'll tell you what, guys, uh, if you don't mind, eh, I'd like to just uh, try and pay some bills so that I could continue doing sure, this. Sure, you know, Wonderful. For the next couple of days. Okay, so here we go. Juve chocolates, cocoa nibs, and cocoa balls from Diamond Estate Grenada are now available at Amazon.com, Amazon.ca, Amazon.co.uk, and GrenadaMarket.com. Try the sensational touch of nutmeg and a touch of ginger chocolates, 75% dark and rich, 100% pure cocoa, and their 60% dark and sweet chocolate bars today. Amazon Prime members enjoy free shipping on these orders in the USA, Canada, and Europe. GrenadaMarket.com Come. When you can't come to the island, the products of the island will come to you. I'm always on the move. Training. Traveling. Competing. So it's good to know I have Quad Bank in the palm of my hand. Introducing e-banking, one of many customer convenience services from Grenada Cooperative Bank. And there's more to come. It's swift, simple, and secure. Welcome home. Together with you, our customers, we energize our community. Together with you, we energize our economy. We are working together to give our nation a better tomorrow. With you, we energize our future. Together, we energize our nation. Thank you for partnering with us as we energize our spice island. Red Leg, energizing our Grenada. All righty, folks, I am back with my two uh, guests. These two young men have decided to spend a part of their Sunday mornings with us here. Before I get back to Brian and Willie, there are a couple of comments here. First of all, OP says there are many who are remaining silent and who have the events buried in their memories and are refusing to release it so that healing will be forthcoming. So says OP. Uh, Ryan says... The clock change has scrambled my brain. You know they move the clocks forward uh, overnight. And uh, the, uh, the annihilation of the Grenada Revolution has mortally wounded all Grenadian people, so says Ryan. Uh, I read Laurie already. Laurie says Peter and Nazem should be watching. I'd like to hear their thoughts on this. Gurley Stuart Lee says, I am glad to be a part of this conversation. I told you guys people like to listen to all you. Huh? Now, a little while ago when we had the, just after the previous guest <coughs> left, somebody posted something here, and I just want to read this. Terry Noel. Terry Noel says, I'm late joining your broadcast. I wrote an article asking for the rebuilding of the former revolutionary leader, Maurice Bishop's residence in a, into its original state. Will the committee address it? Similar things were done in other countries like Jamaica, where the house of Marcus Garvey and Bob Marley was done. Even the reconstruction of his Land Rover was done. I didn't know that. Uh, anyhow, mm-hmm. um, you guys ready to continue your <laughs> uh, bung away? Yeah, <laughs> of course, of course. Uh, okay. All right. Yes, William, the, the, the silent majority. Yeah. Well, you know, it is something that is observable. It's pretty obvious in a sense that many of us um, do not get involved um, in any kind of political agitation. Um, and it has to do with our experiences mm-hmm. uh, of, of, in 1983. We had given so much, we had sacrificed so much, we had believed that this thing was, to go, was going to be for the good of all, until we saw that a very elitist group, arming themselves with a little book knowledge, 
derailed the entire thing and crashed it and we bled in the streets so so when that happened after that many people withdrew and they said you know boy i am not into this thing anymore i'm not going out on the streets and do this i'm not clamoring for anything i have a decent job i have my family and my two three friends that's my circle so there is a principle of life and living and that is that we pay a price for everything that we do so the fact that we made those decisions um, 40 years ago i believe now almost now 37 or so uh, to withdraw <clears throat> means that today we're paying a price for that yeah, but you know, so william william you, you, I, I i agree with you there you know but 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 that same elitist group or members of that elitist group or that elitist group um, expanded to a little bit are the ones that are setting this agenda you know that has set this agenda to 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 for us to forget what you call the footprint of the yeah, revolution yeah. and only promote the legacy of the revolution yeah. so so that should bring us silent majority out to say yeah. hey listen yeah. hold up let's have an honest discussion about what has happened yeah so that we don't go back there yeah because if we don't have that honest discussion it's more than likely that yeah. we will yeah. william and, well, and, and 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 that is how i think we should we yeah. should have a more of a, a this kind of conversation uh, more and, and i agree that, that you know it, it, it beats me it cannot be right that a group of people who kill the revolution could then turn around and say i am the custodian of these good things of the revolution that's why Come I on, asked, that's that, not that's why i asked myself the question you know william you, know, you, inter inter you see you know how i measure these people whether you say it's an invasion or an intervention and invariably that small group of people invariably that small group of people who are people that that were remnants of the rmc would call it an invasion and once you have that once you once you call it that then i ask you how you felt or what were you doing well, in those with those days well we still we still need to clear up a little bit on the major silent majority issue yeah. but this whole question about invasion intervention and so on listen to me the first point is that the rmc back then at that point at the point where the military action took place october 25th i began i be believe that group had no legit legitimacy they were not the custodian of grenadian sovereignty nope. so nobody was affronting a grenadian sovereignty that they were the were the were the custodians of they were never accepted as being legitimate but those are the ones that so, seem to be right in the history you know, yeah because you see there's this academic stuff access academic access let me call it that academic access and so it can grow with the availability with the supply of money so i have money i can cause certain things to be said and written and aired and published S with what intention with the intention of causing the innocent young grenadian to think of the thing not in terms of the footprints but in terms of these glory days and let me let me make this point because in many respects the thing is is is, is has pretty little value we recognize the thing let me t let me ask this question saint lucia did not have a revolution <laughs> eh? yeah are they less developed than is grenada and we don't have to go further so in other words <laughs> we didn't need for there to be a revolution for that for development to take place of the kind that we've experienced okay we have to concede that at the time that the ngm stroke prg um, was legitimate in the eyes of the people that they did these positive things so that's fine but another another level of of reasoning we cannot say that it is that kind or system of government that is best able to deliver that kind of development to the people you see <clears throat> so so we have to be cautious 
when we're trying to crown ourselves now, after having caused all this blood to flow in the streets, we're trying to crown ourselves now and say we, were, we did all these good things and so on. The point, of the fact of the matter is really that um, <clears throat> others could have done these good things not under the label of, of, of Marxism, Leninism, or socialism, communism, whichever. You see? So I don't really, there is not so much that is worthy in pushing the thing. <clears throat> but you know, William, as we talk about the good things that we've done, and, and this, this comes to mind because it's, it's a very topical issue. The NIS, and you mentioned it in your, in your article, was one of the legacies of the revolution. But if I listen to a conversation um, uh, that Mr. Lane was having recently about the pension for public servants and the errors that were made back then when the NIS was set up, even that legacy has some question. Am I wrong? Well, I wouldn't approach it from that perspective. <clears throat> I wouldn't. I think that Grenadians... Um, have a, a certain have had a certain experience of the NIS. Mm -hmm. um, there are many people, many of us who would say that um, it's been uh, a positive. It's been a positive and so on. Listen to me, human systems and so on. <coughs> excuse me. May well from time to time succumb to design problems, okay, mm -hmm. omissions, things that they didn't anticipate and so on and so on. Things that they saw but at the time they could not provide for it because other things were not in, place. Not in place. So yeah. you know, I, I really don't. I think the fact that the NIS is there, what, um, what is we, 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 we receive all of the good things that it can now deliver to ordinary Grenadians and then we see, can we look towards the NIS to do more? Yeah, right, I, guys, I, yes. I don't want to get too far behind mm, on sure, the sure. Facebook comments, but uh, Richard St. Bernard, you guys know somebody named Richard St. Bernard? Yeah. I think they call him Snakey. Toronto. Yeah, Toronto. <laughs> yeah. Hey, presentation. You went to college? <laughs> ha 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 ha! Oh, George. Seven hundred boys <coughs> in Tartine on the plateau. George, uh, please. Was, was where? Was where? Please. <laughs> Do you please, want me to George. sing the school song here? Yeah, George. George, please. <laughs> you know, you know. Please let there be peace. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. You'll find out why I'm asking in just a minute. He's getting all choked up about this. No, you don't need to get choked up about this, really. We're just having a casual chat with friends here. Okay? Please, quiet. Okay. Anyway, Richard says, exceedingly interesting topics and discussion. William and Brian are spot on. Ryan Jabon in Florida says, understandably, citizens of Grenada painfully know that involvement in Grenada politics is lethal. Aye, William. Laurie Bridgman says, blame the boys from PBC. <laughs> blame the boys from PBC. Laurie, I'm a PBC boy. <coughs> I'm not, I can't even spell rebel. <laughs> yeah. I, I, am, I am sure, George, that <coughs> Mr. Cord would probably stand up for his mm -hmm. USS roots. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Bernard, are you listening? <laughs> okay. You know the strange things you know. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <coughs> Anyhow, uh, she says, if we're so to be truthful about the downfall of the revolution, I'm not an, uh, I don't understand exactly what she's saying there. Anyhow, Richard says, Brian, President Reagan called it an invasion. Did you hear me, uh, Brian? I heard you, George. Okay. Let, let, me, let, me, <coughs> let me set the record straight. For those people who were under house arrest, it was an intervention. That's my point. I was under house arrest. So ah. on the 25th, when whoever came from wherever they came, I said hallelujah, mm -hmm. because I did not know what would happen on the 26th. Mm. So to me, it was an intervention. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Ernesto Jose says, great conversation with the guests before and now. Tells me that we're still divided, but it's great to know that we're talking, even though there's disagreement. We're talking, which is a start towards the healing process. Keep talking. Kipling says, some of these very elite are today making laws 
while turning a blind eye to their leaders who violate the Constitution at will. Uh, <coughs> this guy, Kipling, <coughs> Kipling is priceless. Uh, Ryan says, brothers, be careful not to be engulfed in subterfuge, deviousness, hmm. and trickery. So mm. says uh, Ryan. Uh, Richard says, I understand your perspective, Brian. Yeah, okay. All right. You guys want to continue, or do I go take a little what, break? What? Uh, go ahead, go ahead. Well, George, you know, I, I was sitting here thinking, we in the Caribbean are recovering from historical writings because those people who won, the victors in the, his, in the past, wrote the history. So a lot of our history we are now rewriting because we, re we recognize that the English or the French got certain things wrong. And I think that's, that's, that's a, a concept worldwide, that the <coughs> victors write the history and over time that history is corrected. What seemed to be happening here? The people who lost this thing writing the history. Yeah. Yeah. And, and there is something I can't explain it right now, George, maybe 50 years down the road, um, somebody will say, hey, but this is not true, nor is it honest. William? Well, the writing of the history <coughs> is a, a responsibility of, of the nation, really. All right? All of us should participate in, 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 in writing the history, but it, 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 it proceeds on the basis of understanding of the facts or understanding of the, of the facts and then we 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 um we put it down in writing so that f future generations could be guided could be informed if if resources are typically required um to write stuff and uh, therefore um people <coughs> There is no fund <coughs> by the Cultural Foundation of Grenada or any such entity that is available for people who are able to write to um, apply for, for, for funds to do these kinds of projects. And, and I think in this sense, no, you may, that may not have been your intention, but this is an, 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 a, a critical aspect of the conversation we must have that we identify the heritage value and status of the revolution. Mm -hmm. Listen to me. There are many aspects of that because of their significance have now become heritage assets of the people of the nation of Grenada. Now, what must we do about those things? We have in the past showed that we have not concerned ourselves with these fine things in national life. We have not understood the proper role of heritage and culture in national development. The revolution, um, the, the, the experiences of the revolution tell us that we ought to, we ought to record these things mm -hmm. And record them, we, they, they go on public scrutiny regarding as to their honesty or otherwise. So that, for example, when Bernard Court writes, Oh, my good boy, um, uh, um, 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 headache writes, and so on. And we read, we can say, Hey, my man, you're missing something here. This is not quite how it was. Mm. You see? And so, and so, um, <coughs> Those are, those are comments on people who have committed their own views in writing. It's published. But there is on the other side no organized publication mm -hmm. of views that are different, that are meant to correct the record. And I think that that is where there's an opportunity for Grenadian society, both government and non-government, uh, what I call a responsible society, 
to invest in, in, in establishing these aspects of our heritage so that our future generations get the real benefit of what it is that the revolution um, um, contributed to national life. Uh, William, I, at this point, I, I think, because not everybody has read this article, and I hope that everybody at some point in time will read the article, I, if you will, please, I want you to go through the two lists that you have briefly prepared because I consider this a draft of something to come, William. <laughs> and I hope that, um, that, that, that you, will, you, you will put this in a, in a, in a paperback or, or a, a, a novel at some point in time or, or some kind of text that our kids can learn from. I want you to just read what you consider to be legacy and what you consider to be footprint from your article, mm -hmm. if, you, if you care to. Oh well, well, I thought for, you, for you, those people, for those people who are, <coughs> those people who are, it. I'd be happy if you read it to help me. Help th my those voice. people who are who are who have, don't have at, uh, the the, um, the 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 legacy accounts uh, uh, contain the following: the international airport, the NIS uh, expansion in HRD, what is whatever human that is, resource human development. resource development, free secondary <coughs> education. CPE, the Education for Center for Popular for Education. Pop, yeah, pu public education. Heritage value uh, attaching to the revolution and a failed, well, what is it? An anti cultural uh, political ex ex experiment. I, I explain that to me, uh, William. Yeah, in other words, what, what you're saying there <coughs> is that the attempt to guide the government process, the leadership process, uh, by a Marxist-Leninist political model, which was contrary to the culture of the Grenadian people, mm -hmm. essentially <coughs> um, um, uh, evolved, well, not evolved, was of its in and of itself a problem it is a problem because it is speaking to a culture that is not like ours at all. We never knew that stuff. And, and, so, and so the fact that they tried it and its, its role in the demise gives it now that heritage status, that, that failed attempt. So, so, so future generations would understand what you know, that, don't try it again. You list as footprints, um and, and it, it includes human rights violations, the taking of life and the property, censorship, house arrests, detentions, heavy manners, the ruthless gun standard of political control. Everybody had a gun in those days. Mm. Um, and, and this I find very interesting, um, William. And the evolution of ideology over people the elevation elevation sorry mm -hmm. of ideology over people yeah yeah so we we have to be very clear about this very very clear during the time that they practiced the thing they were they were learning and practicing the thing this marxist leninist thing right that became their god essentially that became their god, small G-O-D. Yeah? And so everybody and everything <coughs> had to be seen in relation to the model that they were developing. So the model was a thing. And that is why, for example, when they raised the Marxist Leninist standard, they found Morris Bishop to be a counter. Listen to me. They applied that standard, the thinking, you, you, you understand? And they say, watch, he's failing on this and this and this, therefore he's a counter. Hmm. So that, that, that Marxist-Leninist thing, he was not an able student of the ideology. Certainly he was not as able as Bernard Cord in that sense. And so they didn't, it didn't bother them that in the eyes of the of the people he was in fact the leader they needed an ideological leader 
that was more important to them than the people having a leader that they were comfortable with. Mm. That is the point. You elevate this thing over the people. You have a problem. All right. Guys, let's not get too far behind. Western Link <coughs> says, Great discussion, GBSS old boys. <laughs> However, as a preface to your discussion, you should have given a succinct account of the events that led to October 25th for the benefit of the young ones. Many might be lost in some areas of the discussions. Good point. Mm -hmm. Very okay. good point. Thank you. you know, Weston? That, 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 that would be included in, in Willie's text um, <laughs> when, when, when he writes a book. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Lori Bridgman says... Is the boys from PBC that call a shot and take <coughs> power in their own hands and turn the guns on the masses? And sadly today, they still have ministry positions. So says Laurie Bridgman. Ryan Jabon says, William, understandably so regarding the facts. Facts do not speak for themselves, but facts do not speak for themselves and needs subjective interpretation, and hence, the partisan problems. Ryan, you see him thinking? <laughs> we, we need to do some more research, I think, William, <coughs> in, in, this, in this. This is just... One more. Yeah, Kip ahead. Kipling says, some people write of what they hear, not what they know. So their so-called facts are based on what they should have or could have and not what really happened. Uh, you see, we touched this issue earlier on. I think we need to try and expose it a little bit more. When I made the point about the revisionist approach to the thing, academics, Grenadian and non grenadian academics, will establish for themselves a pastime and researching mm. the Grenada Revolution. It's academic work. That's what they do. Right? They will talk to people. They will look at documents and so on. They will form their own opinions. They will apply it to political models and what have you, political theory. And they will do an academic piece. They're coming from that background, that space. Right? That revision stuff. People have to be very mindful. But what? There is a freedom to publish. So when people do that, one can say take it off the bookshelves mm, mm, mm. or take it off the media. <coughs> what is important is that other people who now, especially those of us of the kind, who, who've had the, who would have had the experience of living through the thing and the duty to be honest if, we, if and when we decide to publish, we must get into the marketplace and do precisely that. And you know what? People are smart enough. They are going to be able to decipher what is fabricated, mm -hmm. what a kind of half story, and what in fact is the real McCoy. They are going to be able to tell the difference. But I'm afraid that we're going to have both sets, supplies of information mm -hmm. to the public because that is the nature of things. What is important, I think, is that while one group that has money has taken the lead um, in causing information uh, of a kind to be put in the public domain, other people need to mobilize resources and mobilize talent to produce a t different and, and more honest accounts of what happened, yes. of the experiences. The, the, the race is not for the swift. I mean, <coughs> they, they, a lot of these guys, because of the, they have the money, will, will take in front. You know, we, have a, we have a saying in, in, in golf, William, and I, I, I do play the game on a Sunday morning. Mm. Um, it's not how you drive, it's how you arrive. <laughs> oh, <I see. laughs> You, know, you can you can start driving and bong away. Eh? <laughs> you 
Margaret bug over is it. responding here to Ryan. She says, uh, Ryan, the subjectivity of interpretation is what people fail to consider. Kipling says, my grand, you must be congratulated for having these two gentlemen. I guess he means Mr. Grant. You must be congratulated for having these two gentlemen on today. But hats off to them. Are you guys stealing my thunder? Stealing what? <laughs> are, you st are you stealing my thunder? Keep your thunder, George. Oh, thunder. I have my own. <laughs> Uh, Margaret says, but how do you determine what is honest? No two people will experience an event the same way. It's kind of like the glass half empty or half full. <coughs> what makes your account more honest than the other person's? I would love to hear you guys. Well, uh, you know, okay, fair enough. But um, let's reduce it to this. Um, facts. There are facts. And this commentary interpretation that people put on facts right so <clears throat> one may be um untruthful regarding facts mm -hmm. in other words uh 10 people died on march 13th at the at the gary um um thing at true blue mm -hmm. <clears throat> um somebody might say no say no only one person died now, who's going to establish the truth? What, what, both of them are purporting to be facts. <clears throat> Some authoritative person is going to have to come and say, this is in fact the case. It is only one who died <coughs> and not ten. And let me say this. Bernard, in his book, um, made a comment about a, an individual who was killed a few days after March, after October 19th. And we, nobody, and, and I take Bernard to have been stating a fact. He says, and in, a, and in one case, a few days later. So he's saying that somebody else was executed. But we've never been told who. So it is a fact based on what Bernard has said, that somebody was killed. We don't know who it was. So it would be wrong of us to say, well, you know, it was George's <coughs> grandmother or my grandfather and so on. We don't know. So it is the nature of things. It is not a perf Listen. But, but, but you know, really, there, <coughs> there, 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 are some, there are some factual, there, there are some evidence. Eh? For example, I knew this number by heart, but I, I don't remember it right now. I think it was 4402032. was a number published in, on radio. If you hear anybody saying anything about the revolution, call this number. You call that number, and if, if that somebody, if William, call that number and say, listen, I hear Brian saying X, Y, or Z. Brian could be picked <coughs> up and put in jail without due process for an indefinite period of time. Now, that is a fact. So when we say, when William says, human rights violation, I think there is evidence to prove that between 1979 and 1983, people ended up in jail without due process, mainly because of suspicion of being a counter-revolutionary. As a matter of fact, <coughs> I think Dr. <coughs> Japal was released from prison in time just before he died. And he was picked up for counter-revolutionary. So there's evidence that there was human rights violation during that period. So there, there, there are some hard facts, George, that cannot be disputed because they happened. Mm -hmm. All right. I think that, There's sorry. a comment here from Margaret. Margaret says, the problem with facts is that they most often can tell you what, <coughs> when, and where. But the how and why facts have a serious problem answering. Well, um, the, the why, why, <coughs> why did they pick up person A? Um, <laughs> because somebody said that person A 
was a counter revolution. Eh? Not because somebody said, because personally it was perceived to be a threat. It was perceived to be a threat. No. That's so, right. so, I mean, y yes, it's, it's, it's to a the lot security of interests of the revolution. Yes, yes, yes. In yes. the same way that Morris had to be put on the house arrest because at, by that time he was determined to have been a counter revolutionary. It is fact that the constitution was suspended. <coughs> Without a constitution, what is the rights of the people? I mean, I think the, the preamble of our constitution talks a lot about the rights of people, don't they, William? I, I, I read the constitution, sure. the rights of to, to do this and the rights to do that. And the right. If all those rights were suspended between 1979 and 83, what kind of society are we live in? Laurie Bridgman is asking here, George, why nobody is writing about what led what led up to the freedom of Morris when he was under house arrest? Is it because <coughs> we don't know? There are, a lot of, there are a lot of information that have not yet come forward, George, about that period, um, especially um, between the 19th and 25th. Well, some people are sitting on some very valuable information you know, and, and, and not, not talking at all. Um, but it would be interesting to find out uh, what those people know. As a matter of fact, there was a conversation <coughs> about, uh, about uh, um, the, the after the South Africa uh, amnesty thing, what was it, the, the recon reconciliation? Mm, yeah. Um, that Grenada should have a similar thing. I think we attempted something, but it didn't work. Um, uh, uh, what was it called, William? Um, this Truth and Something Truth reconciliation. and Reconciliation Commission, <coughs> where uh, people were, 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 were given amnesty or whatever, to come forward and have a conversation. Uh, um, we, we attempted something, but it, 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 didn't, it, didn't, um, right. it, it didn't work. <coughs> but Kip you know, sometimes... Kipling Francis says, there are facts, sadly, without the facts. Uh, John Crow Alexander says, we need more of this type of conversation. What do they know about Hopevale? What do you guys know about Hopevale? Well, it was a camp for political prisoners. And if you have a camp for political prisoners, um, conceivably, all kinds of practices will occur there in terms of the treatment of prisoners. Mm -hmm. If one, for example, wished to extract uh, information from a prisoner, then, then one might use certain unfriendly a painful, <laughs> Torture, <will> you? <laughs> you know, to get the information. Yeah. So, uh, what is critical? Uh, it's a beautiful example. The critical thing is that there was a camp for political prisoners. Is it as critical for us to know, well, you know, they engage in A, B, C, D, E, and E? Or we can say, listen, by virtue of the fact that there was a camp for political prisoners, we anticipate that in any number of those prisoners might have been treated inhumanely. Well, that is the nature of the thing. Or was it documented? <coughs> you you know, know, we picked up, there's a, there's a document that says we picked up William Joseph on March the 1st, and this is what he was charged with. Yeah, but I, I'm not I I'm don't not, think I'm not that one is likely to find that, that kind that of stuff. That documentation took place. You know, you you know. know. Okay, so you, you were here for this. Were you here for the revolution? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Throughout. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm sitting here, and you can imagine how chilling it is for me. I wasn't here. Mm -hmm. But just <coughs> listening to this makes my blood run cold. Now, here's a comment from Laurie Bridgman. Laurie says, George, I was in the room with Morris on that day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She's responding to what you were, your response to her a little while ago. But, but you know, George, what I've found over time is that people who sympathize with the revolution, who lived in metropolitan cities, let's say Toronto, New York, whatever, in North America, who was subject to <coughs> um, certain cultural and racial uh, problems in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, sympathized with the revolution because what they were going through in North America, you know, not necessarily because they believed what was happening, you know, or may have sympathized with what happened in Cuba, but they were very anti-American, a lot of people who sympathized with the revolution. And, and, and a lot of them still have that sympathy, not necessarily because they understood what happened in Grenada between 1979 and 83, but because they're still holding on to their experience yes, that's in true. North America. That's true. The, true. the other thing... I don't know if you guys remember this. In 1986, Herbert Blaze 
was trying to get Grenadians like myself to come home and help rebuild. He came to Toronto. And on a Saturday afternoon, I'll never forget this, this man sat down at the University of Toronto. He was addressing Grenadians. And man, they were out en masse, cussing the man, telling him to go back where he come from, get America out of Grenada. I mean, they, they really <coughs> went to town on him. And you know something, Brian? The next morning, Sunday morning, at Harry O'Gilvie's home in Oakville, there was a, a brunch. Uh, I was invited to meet with the Prime Minister. That man sat on a bed, and he looked at me, he said, Mr. Grant, I want you to come home and help. But I want you to know something. He says, when I saw what I did yesterday at the university, he said, Mr. Grant, it made my heart bleed. Those were his words. It made my heart bleed. He says, Mr. Grant, they were not there. Exactly. They were not. And you know something? We discussed a number of other things. But at that point, I said, okay, Mr. Blaze, I had never come home in the 16 years since I left <coughs> here. I said, okay, sir, I'll come in. Mm -hmm. The next month I was here. Yeah, I mean, that is that things flow in, you know, in that way with human beings, mm -hmm. right? For example, you, you know, the pre-1979 NGM was not the NGM of 1983. Let me repeat that. The pre-1979 NGM was not the same NGM by the time we had come to 1983. Mm -hmm. What is the difference? Before 1979, the NGM was talking development and so on and so on for the country and the people without the ideological okay. quoting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And by 83, they had gone. Ralph Gonzalez came here the other day and said that is when he distanced himself from the comrades. When he came here in 81 or 82, and they told him that they were going down the Marx Leninist line, mm. and he distanced himself. That was that is what had become of the NGM. So they are, hold on. And while that ideological thing was taking place, and I mention it because it was the sole the sole factor involved in the demise. Ordinary Grenadians were not aware of that particular thing going on. So, for example, when they put Morris under house arrest and the people began to agitation, ask, one of the questions people ask, um, why all, they said, why you put him under house arrest? They say, Central Committee decide that. And you know what the question was? People ask, what is that? What is that? <laughs> you see, they know that they have a government. This is a cultural thing speaking now. We have a government. They're not, they're not in this ideological thing with Marxism-Leninism. Marxism they're not in that. We have a government led by a man named Morris Bishop with cultural rights of leadership. And that is the, part, the issue. All right. well, that look, is the issue. Well, look, just, before we, just before we go, uh, George, bear with me a minute. I say all the time, the only democratic process, the only democratic institution in Grenada between 1979 and 1983 was the Central Committee. Because that committee by vote, if I understand <laughs> the documentation correctly, <laughs> that committee by vote decided on joint leadership. And that was the only democratic institution in Grenada. George, just before we wrap, I want to tell Willie <laughs> that I am I, I, I'm happy that he started the, this this. Um, the writing of the history of Grenada in this revolution, legacy, and footprint. And I hope that he will continue along um, expanding on this uh, two-page document that I have in front of me. And that um, I look forward, William, to seeing a textbook at some point. Um, if I can, I will help you uh, uh, raise the funds necessary. I don't have it myself. But, um, <laughs> but I think it's an important piece of work. And I wish you will continue. Well, I am encouraged, and I thank you for your kind words. Um, I don't know that I could um, fulfill your expectations, but I was very pleased to share those perspectives with the Grenadian um, people. 
and and my mind is set on the young Grenadian. Really, I think there are some things that uh, we um, of our time and so on. A last set of things that we must do. Mm -hmm. We must do to help them to be on a course that is better. Let me see this in, in closing. You know, in 1974, we were preparing for GCEO levels. And as schoolboys, we were out on the streets for about three months or so. Gary must go. Gary must go. We did not even understand what it is that we were saying. What is it that we were advocating? But we were caught up in that thing. The anti-independence thing. So that when independence came, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't care. It, yeah, we didn't care about independence. And so that was my state of mind for a very long time. Fast forward to 2000. X years after that. I'm a grown man with a family. I'm working as a director of tourism and I'm standing on the porch of the office there. I hear a chant coming across the carnage. And as it got nearer and so on by about the fast station, I could tell it's a tiny tots from the Green Street Pre-Primary School. They were decked off in their national colors. Three years old, four years old, decked off in their national colors. It was independence season of that year. And the tears came down my face. I was a guilty man. I said to myself, my God, I didn't care. I didn't care about something that was good for my own country. I never cared. And here are these little thoughts, X years later, mm -hmm. demonstrating their love for, the, and they hardly understand what's going on. But they are into it. And so it tells us that many times we commit errors of history either at a personal level or at the level of, a, of the society. And the demise of the revolution and the way it did was an era of history. And, and we must learn from that. We must learn from that. So I could tell the story today about myself in relation to independence. And many people could tell the story about themselves in relation to support for or against the revolution. And all of these things must be shared for the benefit of the younger generations. We simply need to be honest about it. All right. Gentlemen, listen. I mean, I could spend the rest of the afternoon here. <laughs> but, but I'm also hungry, and I bet you guys are hungry. Yes, yeah. Do you have ginger in here? Yes. I am, I'm sitting here smelling ginger and wondering <laughs> where the hell that ginger comes from. He's got the, look, ginger a, tea. a thingy here with ginger tea. I've been drinking a lot of cinnamon tea. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. good. Guys, we got to go. But I, I, it would be remiss of me if I ignored some of the comments here on Facebook because I think a lot of them are pretty profound. First of all, um, Lori Bridgman says, George, why nobody writing about the lead up to the freedom of Morris when he was under house arrest? Is it because they don't know? I think I read that. Um, Lori Bridgman, she says she was in the room with Morris. Um, somebody named Doranny Marshall says, who did the shooting to execute? Where were the bodies taken? And what happens after? Uh, guys, are you asking? Get down on your knees if you want some more time. Do you want some more time? <laughs> no, 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 come no, on. No, no, let it rest. Let it rest, George. <laughs> I'm hungry. No, no, let's, no, let's, uh, yeah. We're going to pass that, okay? Yes, yes. Um, Ernesto said, oh, um, she says she was in the room with Morris today. Ernesto says, I'm here listening to the guests. What platform do you two plan? or planning to have to help Grenadians who are hurting <laughs> from these periods? No answer, okay. <laughs> um, Richard said, George, I was there at that meeting. I think Richard is speaking about that meeting with uh, Blaze and me and, 
University of Toronto. John Crow Alexander says, No, Brian, this is a very simplistic, dismissive, big brush view of nationals living outside of Grenada. Okay. He, he just winked. He had nothing to say. Ryan says, Excellent dialogue, guys, teaching us that a one party state does not work. Grenada needs proportional representation and a political pluralism which prevents any single group from gaining dominance in our Grenada. So says Ryan. Laurie says, George, I really think Gemma Belmore should be remembered for her role in freeing Morris on October 19th. Kipling says, most of the anti-Americans are enjoying life here in America, <coughs> yet still hating America for its treatment of Cuba and Venezuela. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm glad I still have these guys' picture up on the screen here. You can, you can see their reaction. Yvonne Joseph says, good morning, Mr. Grant and friends. The very people who destroyed the revolution are outside today, writing books, in Parliament, passing laws, etc. I would never read Bernard Cord's books. I lived to the experience, and none of these guys can fool me. All those who pull the gun on the people are free today still trying to fool people. Some of them are making laws today that oppress the masses. So says Avon. Margaret says, er, Willie's interpretation of the history of Grenada? Okay. Ryan says, yes, Willie, but what will replace Eric, that was absent in the thinking. Billy Langine says, not caring or not understanding is different. Hang in there, uh, uh, Brian. Uh, Anthony Bridgman says, good program. <clears throat> John Crow Alexander says, to your guest, I would like to be in touch. I would like to be in touch in the future. They can reach me at 917, I'll give you guys the number, it's on Facebook, 917-676-2634, John Crow Alexander. Renewed Purpose says, we should not forget that Grenada was envied, even by the USA, and their involvement was not a coincidence. The CIA had their people posing as a pastor, he and his wife, and many other things even the bombing of the factories and so on, was all deliberate to keep Grenada dependent on the U.S. in particular. So says Renewed Purpose. Margaret says, I didn't see why you have to feel guilty, Willie. All movements have had opposition. People and life are dynamic, not static, and have the right to change positions based on change in facts. And she says, yes, George, I was going to suggest earlier to you to get John Crow on the show sometime. And I see he has given his contact info. Well, John Crow, I would love to talk with you. If Margaret says talk to John Crow, mm -hmm. talk to John Crow. You, 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 know, you guys know John Crow? No, I can't say. No, I, I don't know who it is. I, 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 I can't put a face on him. <coughs> we can't put a face. We can put a John Crow on him. <laughs> okay. And finally, Ernesto says, need an answer, guess. What do you offer for healing? Truth. Truth. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's Truth that. And yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Folks, mm. it's 10 minutes after 12 o'clock. Thank you very much, gentlemen. I really appreciate having you here today. I've been chatting with Mr. William Joseph. That's the guy there with purple in the middle and the other one on his uh, left, Mr. Brian Pitt. Brian, I hope to see you on Friday again. Let's see if you can rope this guy in at some point. You know, it would be nice to have him along.
Pardon me? Pardon me? Pardon me? You'll be busy writing the book. Oh, he'll be, yeah. yeah, Legacy and Footprints of the Revolution. Okay. <laughs> right. okay. Thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate having you. And um, I'll tell you what, I'm just going to take one quick little break here, and uh, we'll come on back and wrap it up. I'm always on the move. Training. Traveling. Competing. So it's good to know I have Quad Bank in the palm of my hand. Introducing eBanking, one of many customer convenience services from Grenada Corporate Bank. And there's more to come. It's swift, simple, and secure. Welcome home. Juve chocolates, cocoa nibs, and cocoa balls from Diamond Estate Grenada are now available at Amazon.com, Amazon.ca, Amazon.co.uk, and GrenadaMarket.com. Try the sensational touch of nutmeg and a touch of ginger chocolates. 75% dark and rich, 100% pure cocoa, and their 60% dark and sweet chocolate bars today. Amazon Prime members enjoy free shipping on these orders in the USA, Canada, and Europe. GrenadaMarket.com. When you can't come to the island, the products of the island will come to you. All righty, folks, that's going to do it for this Sunday, the 10th day of March 2019. Hey, listen, man, I really had a blast this morning, and I hope you did too. I hope we've been informative, we've opened your eyes in some way. That's what this is all about. There's a lot of talk out there, a lot of talk, but a lot of it is just, you know, scandal, TB, Brango. Um, I hope that when you walk away from these programs, you're a little bit more enlightened, you know, and a better person for it. God bless you. Parting word from the Holy Scriptures as we pull the curtain down this morning. And it comes to you from John 14, verse 27. Just one verse. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not be afraid. John 14, 27. Pilgrims, that's where George reports. Let's see here. Ryan says, thank you, George, and guests for a dynamic program. Tell us how to access William's book. Uh, I'll ask Willie to let you know. Okay. Georgie Porgy is going to scoot. That's going to do it for me today. And uh, I certainly hope you'll be with us tomorrow morning for the next edition of Good Day Grenada. Join us every weekday morning. A group of us get together here, 9 o'clock. Just one hour, 9 o'clock. Please, join us tomorrow. God bless you all. Mm -hmm.